Mikhail, can you hear me okay? Yes, hi, Walter, thank you. All right. Recording in progress. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Welcome everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a hearing for the Committee of Adjustment for the Town of Grimsby. I'm going to start by introducing the uh, staff members, or sorry, the staff present, as well as the committee members. So there's five committee members in attendance this evening. They are, I'm just going to have them wave. It's kind of a full screen, so it might be a little hard to see. But we've got uh, Dan, uh, Dylan Bailey. Dylan. Uh, Danielle Beck. Hi, Danielle. Adam Mottershead. Adam. Herb Nobs. Herb. And myself, Kevin Antonias, as chair. Staff members present this evening are Walter Basic, Deputy Director of Planning. Hi, Walter. Michaela Bray, our Secretary Treasurer. Bianca Veraccia. Heritage Planner, hope I said that right. Hi, Bianca. And Spencer Pierce, Supervisor of Capital Engineering. I don't see him on my screen, but I'm assuming he's on the next one. So I just got an announcement regarding the live streaming. Members of the public are advised that our meetings are live streamed by the Town of Grimsby. Individuals and media may be audibly and or visually recorded during this meeting. As a reminder, all electronic devices are to be set in silent mode during our committee meeting. I'm going to just outline the procedures this evening. So for the purposes of the Zoom meeting, applicants will be placed in the waiting room until your application is heard. The purpose of the application, any relative correspondence will be heard, following which the applicant will be given the opportunity to address the application. Any person concerned with the application will then be given an opportunity to speak. At the conclusion of the discussion, the committee will render a decision advised of any applicable conditions. Copies of decisions will be mailed to the applicant or agent and to any other person who files a written request. And to request a copy of the decision, please email Michaela Bray, Assistant Tre Secretary Treasurer. Any person, corporation, or public body has the right to appeal either the decision itself or the conditions of consent to the Ontario Land Tribunal, the OLT, within 20 days of the date of the decision for consent to sever and 20 days of the de date of a decision for the minor variance application. Everyone present will be given an opportunity to comment on the applications being heard this evening. Please address your comments and questions through the chair. And given the full agenda we have this evening, we're gonna limit each participant to five minutes to speak. Each participant may only speak once. If you hear your comment presented by someone else, please do not duplicate the remarks. Just mention that you agree or concur with those comments earlier. And when you're called, we ask that you state your name and address for the record. Agencies commenting on applications may request certain conditions be imposed. Voicing objected, objections to these conditions will not adversely affect the committee's decision. All members of the committee have viewed the properties on the agenda tonight and are familiar with the lands that are subject to these applications. I'm going to call for disclosure of any peculiar interest. Do any members of the committee have any peculiar interest in with respect to the application that are before us this evening? No, no, and I have none. Um, we uh, then have a request for an adjournment or withdrawal. Uh, I believe it's a request for withdrawal of Lake, Lake Street uh, application A33-22. Is that correct, Michaela? Correct. Uh, there's a request for withdrawal. Okay. So that will be taken off the agenda this evening. And then the first uh, order of business is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, which was August 16th. 2022. Uh, have the committee members had the opportunity to review the minutes and are there questions or comments? And if not, do we have a mover and a seconder for those minutes? Just raise your hand, might be easier. Adam, move by Adam, seconder. Dylan, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. And opposed, if any, was carried. Okay, so we have 11 applications before us. So um, I'm just, I'll quickly outline the procedures again, and then we'll have you um, um, set into the um, waiting room until your application is uh, called. So um, we're gonna have Michaela go through a small PowerPoint presentation and, and summarize the correspondence that we've received from any agencies and or the public. Then we'll call on the agent or application or the applicant to speak to the application. Again, we ask that you state your name and address for the record. The committee members will then have comments or question 
on the applicant, and then we'll have the uh, public or agencies um, ask questions if they would like or, or offer comments. And then we'll wrap it up with uh, committee members and then um, we'll make a decision either to uh, approve, deny, or approve the conditions or defer to another meeting. There is again a 20 day appeal period before it becomes final and binding. Um, and we're now gonna go to the first application, but I'll give Michaela a second to put everybody into waiting room. So the first one is the minor variance at seven Park Road South, A3622, uh, number seven Park Road South. Okay, there's just one person. I'm not sure what application you're here for. Uh, you have your name as iPhone 12. Uh, could you just uh, confirm what application you're here for? Looks like you have like a black baseball cap on. iPhone 12. There's no name attached to it. No. The gentleman with the baseball hat and oh, you're pointing. Are you? He's attempting to unmute. Yeah. Uh, I can ask. There we go. Bill Skillstra. Okay, so that's two forty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, first application we have is A3622 for Seven Park Road South. Uh, it's an application to facilitate the construction of a new single detached two-story dwelling. Uh, the variances being requested are to permit a lot coverage of 28.5%, whereas 25% is permitted, uh, and to permit an interior side yard setback on the north side of 1.8 meters, whereas three meters is required. Uh, here is the site plan as uh, circulated on the notice of hearing. Uh, renderings of the proposed dwelling. Uh, aerial photography showing the context of the neighborhood and to note the part directly to the west that has the parcel with the seven that's been severed into four uh, lots. It uh, just hasn't been updated yet in the mapping system. Um, a photo, this was taken by, uh, from Google Maps uh, in November 2021. Uh, the current site conditions are a bit different, um, but they are vacant still. Uh, for correspondence uh, from the planning department, there are no objections. From Public Works, the owner must demonstrate that the reduced side yard setback can accommodate uh, adequate uh, the adequate required side yard swale systems for drainage conveyance. From fire, no comments, and PCA, no comments. Uh, the Niagara Escarpment Commission notes that uh, the property is located within the Niagara Escarpment plan area. Uh, it's designated as an urban area. However, it is located outside of their area of development control, and therefore no NEC permit would be required, and they have no objections. Heritage has no objections, CN Rail no objections, 
uh, Power has no comments. Uh, we received a letter from a neighbor at Park Road at 5 Park Road South. Um, I believe she's here today, but her letter outlines concerns about um, property, her property being in the shade and shadows, as well as um, real estate value concerns. Um, we also received a letter from 3 Park Road South. Uh, these um, neighbors could not be in attendance, but they had concerns about shadows um, and the impact of lot coverage increase on flooding and drainage. Thank you. Thanks, Michaela. Is the owner or their applicant here? Yes. John, did, would you like to elaborate or respond to some of the letters or comments raised, John? I think you're on mute, I believe. Uh, Jane. No, it's Jane oh. Wainwright. Oh, sorry. I think, Jane, are you representing the owner? I'm the owner of Five Park South. Okay, we'll give you an opportunity after the uh, applicant goes and then the committee will ask questions and then we'll open it up to the neighbors. Okay. Thanks. John? Yeah, I am John Maroney of 370 York Boulevard in uh, Suite 101 in uh, Hamilton. Uh, thanks for accepting our application and processing it. Um, I've read the comments. I understand them. I'm willing to answer any questions brought forth. Okay, thank you. Committee members, any questions from the committee? Uh, Adam? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to sort of maybe uh, echo one of the questions the neighbor had about um, if it's possible, maybe they can shave a little bit off the driveway area to the south and shove the whole building a little bit away from that 1.8 meters, so it gives a little more space. Am I okay to answer that or? Yeah, sure. We, I've been through these designs a, a few times. Um, it, it's, it's, I'm concerned with turning radius coming in and out of the garage. Um, I'm 58 years old and we're <laughs> getting nothing but older. Um, and we feel that we need that amount of space. Um, when we did deal with the engineers and the architects, we are already very tight to begin with at that, the uh, setback that's on the south. So we did make a few attempts to reduce and that's what we came up with. Thank you. Uh, Herb? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, the uh, Public Works had a comment about uh, verifying the uh, uh, maintaining of the integrity of the swale on the north. Uh, as of yet, I haven't heard any comments from the owner indicating how they're going to achieve that. Uh, to the satisfaction of the public works. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Spencer, oh, Walter's going to comment on that, I presume. Walter? Yes, thank you. Through you, Chair. Um, the uh, building permit for the site will all be subject to a grading review through our engineering department. So uh, the building permit will not be able to be obtained unless. Uh, uh, the engineering department is satisfied with the uh, drainage pattern and the grading of the property. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, along that same lines, uh, is the is there a representative of the building of the uh, public works department uh, at the meeting tonight? And if so, what do they recommend as the minimum distance that they'll need for this swale? Yeah, I didn't see, I, th I thought he was introduced, but I didn't see uh, him in the, I don't see him on the screen. He's only going to be here for 292. Oh, okay. Spencer? Yeah, he's not on for this one, although he commented. Um, is this, Walter, I guess my question is, is this whale any different? Like the normal side yard setback on the typical are 1.8. This one is three meters, which is nine feet, which I kind of agree with. If you can't meet nine feet on a hundred foot lot, I don't know what the issue is. I don't think it's a necessarily a hardship, but what's engineers concerned that's different than a, let's say a narrower lot in this case. Yeah, the, the main concern is that uh, some of the side yard will be taken up by the retaining wall. So they just put that in as a cautionary uh, comment. Uh, but again, they, they if, if additional space is required on that side, uh, that will be reflected through the engineering review of the grading plan. And, and uh, it's it's possible that through that review, if 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 
uh, additional space is required, um, then um, the building will have to be pushed a little bit further. South. But I, I will note for you that the high point, if you look at the plan, the high point is halfway down the side of the building. So uh, the, the size, the swale size requirement along that side of the building is relatively minor uh, because uh, essentially at the high point, there will be no swale and uh, the, the drainage will go to the west on the west side of the building and to the east on the east side of the building. So there's there in, in terms of in terms of uh, 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 drainage design, this is the ideal situation for minimal size swales. So I don't anticipate personally, I don't anticipate any any issues here. Mr. Uh, Chair, may Chair, I call yeah, John, I'll just let John answer that first, then I'll go to you, Herb. I just want to also uh, point out that I did talk to Jason Schooley, who is the uh, civil engineer with Upper Canada Consultants. Um, and we would uh, consider a thinner, let's say, retaining wall system as opposed to the wider arm of stone look, just to give us a little bit more space. And like I said, uh, Jason Schooley is a P engine civil matters, handling all kinds of projects like this. And he assured me that he would be able to satisfy town requirements. Okay, Herb, you had a question? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, when I was out there, the, the lot itself looks fairly flat. Uh, I don't see where there's gonna be a difference in grade between the front and the back, unless there's something gonna be changing on this uh, design. And also uh, when I was there, the existing swale seems to be on the north side of the tree line that is there. And I'm just wondering, uh, how are these trees going to be affected with this retaining wall? Walter? Yes, the, the grades will have to change. So um, there will have to be a situation with the new grading so that there is positive drainage in one way or the other. So you don't want pooling. So you don't want a flat lot. You want a lot sloped uh, to a minimum amount. Uh, so the grades will be raised slightly and thus the need for a retaining wall along the north side of the site. So there will be, once the grades are completed, there will be a slope to the front from the middle of the building and slope to the back from the middle of the building along the north side. Uh, maybe John can answer the uh no, I agree. I agree totally with what you're saying. Um, if you look at it now, the way it's left, it is low to start with. So it really doesn't give you a good idea of what the grades are going to be. I do agree. There's probably some upwards of 18 inches of fill that still need to come to that site to start to create the drainage pattern. So what you see right now is, is not even close to what's going to be there. Does that answer it, Herb? Uh, not really. I still have the question about uh, the trees on the north, uh, and this whale is, seems to be on the north side of this. Uh, these trees. Sorry, uh, the swale is in the south side of the trees. So the trees are staying. Is that what you're saying, John? Yeah, the, I, I believe the trees belong mainly to Five Park Road South. I don't think they're on Seven. There might be the odd one, but I think primarily they all belong to Five, if I'm not mistaken. If yeah, the, survey, the, the surveyors were there. The yeah. surveyors were there when I let went yesterday, I think it was yesterday, and the stake looks like it's right down the middle of the trees, if okay. I recall. Okay. Um, Herb, you still have your hand up, or is that? Yeah, so still I'm still uh, asking about the swale and uh, the uh, maintenance of the root system then for these trees. If these trees are right on the lot line, then... Uh, what's going to happen with the root system. Walter. Thank you through you, Chair. Again, as, as I've mentioned previously, the, um, the existing grades are relative, quite a bit lower than what the future grades will be. So the retaining wall that you see there, they will, the retaining wall will be essentially placed beside the trees and then earth will be brought in. So, so there won't be any excavation to accommodate the retaining wall. Um, uh, if there's going to be any um, damage to the root system, it'll be from the excavation for 
for the foundations and the footings, um, but not 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 the retaining wall. The retaining wall will be on the existing grade beside the trees. Okay. All right. So, any other questions from committee members? No. I'm going to open it up to the neighbor, Jane. Could you just get your uh, name and address for the record? I know you yes. wrote a letter, so. I did. Uh, my name is Jane Wainwright. I am the property owner of Five Park Road South, directly north of the proposed development at Seven Park Road South. The information I receive shows the new building to be a significant size two-story structure that requires two site plan variations. The very large lot is 100, uh, or 1,318 square meters, and the proposed structure covers 28.5% of the lot with an allowable 25%. This accounts for a very large pool shed. The full footprint of this will far exceed the lot coverage when you take into consideration the large in-ground pool and circular driveway. The plan shows a very large two-story home which will tower over my property and home leading to a lack of natural sunlight during many hours of the year, especially in the summer when I enjoy working on my gardens. I am a retired lady whose hobby is my gardens and without natural sunlight, my gardens would be in the shadow. The shadowing would be most de detrimental to my enjoyment of my property and the natural beauty of the area, particularly in the summer months. Without being able to see the elevations of this home, I wonder if the house could be reversed so that the presumably shorter elevations of the garages would be kinder to my property. My second concern is the setback of 1.8 meters, 5.91 feet, instead of the required three meters, 9.84 feet, setback between his building and my tree properly lined. This is more than su signif sufficient land allowance to the south, which just the driveway shows on the diagram. There is 7.17 meter setback with only three required. If there are windows on the north side of the house, I will, I will have to be concerned about neighbors looking over my property or into my home. In my opinion, this is a monstrous sized house that is much larger than anything else in the immediate area. When this development was first introduced, we were of the impression the builder would try to maintain the look and size of the lot, which he has done, and the size of the home, which he has not. In my opinion, if we were to reverse the plan of the house to have the garage, which presumably will be of lower elevation and no windows on a second floor, then the need to abut my property or overshadow me would be significantly decreased. I am asking the members of the Committee of Adjustments to consider if the home A, if the home is built as outlined, I would expect that the north setback be a minimum of the three meter required, or B, preferably flip the house plan so that the driveway and garage are abutting my property, which would significantly decrease my concerns about shadowing and impede enjoyment and use of my property and concerns about windows on the north side of the home facing my home. Thank you. Thank you. Dylan, you have a question? Yes, I just through you, Mr. Chair, I just have a question to the homeowner. You say in your letter and you stated about um, shadowing and, and privacy, but when I looked at the properties, there seems to be a large amount of trees and mature trees around your, your, um, your, your property. So I don't understand. I mean, unless, and, and unless, and I'll maybe ask this to Walter at the same time, unless I'm missing something that this is an extremely high house, which I believe does meet um, the bylaw. I don't understand how this development is is going to shade your property any more than your trees do now? Um, I've reduced the amount of trees there. 
and I've actually had the tree people in to um, get rid of branches and things like that. So I do have lots of sunlight and um, believe it or not, I do get a lot of sunlight. Okay, Dylan, uh, sorry, uh, somebody else had their hand up, Walter. Thank you. Um, again, with the with the agenda circulation, um, it appears as though there are other other than one first floor window. There are no second floor windows facing north. Um, it appears as though the garage side is actually the side that has a second floor window. So that would be the south side. So uh, so I, I believe uh, Mrs. Wainwright got her wish in terms of this particular design. Thank you, Walter. Any other questions or comments? If, oh, Walter, her. Yes, Mr. Chair, could we have the uh, lot plan up again one more time, if that's possible? Kayla? Is it possible to zoom in on it uh, on, on the north side? Does that help, Walter? Or sorry, Herb? Yes, Mr. Chair, it, it just looks there. Um, the setback is to the face of the building, correct? And uh, to the foundation, actually. What's the setback from the retaining wall to the property line? Is there one? Uh, is there a distance in between Walter or John? Can you answer that? No, there's I don't no number. Know, I don't know what that distance will be. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it'll it'll likely be, uh, you know, when retain or when stone walls are put in, uh, usually uh, you adjust it on site based on existing conditions, like like trees, as an example. You want to stay away from the trees a little bit. So I'm, I'm assuming that when they place the stones there, they'll they'll be um, they'll be placed at a safe distance away from the trees. Well, my my. Un understanding is that a swale has to be put between the retaining walls and the property line. So someplace somewhere we need to know how far that retaining wall is going to be away from the building so that there's adequate space for this swale that's going in there. And if someone could please provide us uh, financial development wise implications on the site um, or any specific site situations that have has been told to the committee. Um, so at this time, I'm not in a, in a position to support this application either. Um, specifically with that side yard setback, the, the lot coverage, um, I'm a little bit more lenient on just because it is a larger lot. Um, you know, 3.5% isn't going to really be visually um, noticeable from the 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 street or have a large enough impact but that side yard with respects to public works comments the neighboring concerns um and the need for a retaining wall in there i do have concerns about that functionally um working uh i don't feel confident and comfortable always leaving it up to a grading plan and the building permit process not saying that i don't have confidence in town staff um but um the uh, design of it, uh, water always drains and we don't want to flood out the neighbors. And if there's concerns with a, we don't like, like has already been explained, um, armor stone has to be shifted. It has to be accommodated on site and we don't know what that is. And that's that, that setback, that side yard is getting small. So, um, I'm not supportive of it at this point in time, that side yard. So, uh, those are my comments at this point in time. Um, Thank you. And Walter has his hand up and then we'll call for a motion. Uh, where'd Walter go? Walter. Yeah, thank you. Thank you through you, Chair. Uh, there, there's just one question that was unanswered. I, I think uh, 
Uh, Member Nobes asked uh, if there was a swale requirement on the north side of the retaining wall that would be all along the property line. And there wouldn't be a, a swale requirement along the north property line. So everything essentially drains to the north. Okay, thank you. All right, then, could we have a motion to approve or uh, refuse? Um, Mr. Chair? Oh, John, I, John, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Can I just clarify that, Walter? Yep. Like, um, I guess I did hire Upper Canada Consultants. These are civil engineer drawings. The drawing that you see forth in front of you was prepared by a professional engineer. Um, we do have to go through the building permit process. Uh, Danielle, I, I understand and respect your comments, uh, but if we have engineers that can make this work, I did mention about the thinner retaining wall system as opposed to the wider armor stone. Um, I would appreciate maybe a, a, another look at that and allow us to submit for the building permit and handle it through the building permit process. And especially at Walter's comments saying how it's not much, there's a high point there, the swales are gonna be minimal to start with. I would appreciate a reconsideration there. Okay, thank you, John. Danielle, you still have your hand up, so I don't know if that's intentional or not. <laughs> okay, do we have a, a motion, a mover and a seconder then, Herb? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I just had another comment or question. Uh, Walter, uh, you're, you're indicating that the um, swale is going to be between the building wall and the edge of the retaining wall. Is that what you're indicating? If it is, then what about the properties that's supposed to be draining, supposed to be draining the properties from the rear along that uh, swale, I'm, I'm presuming. Uh, Walter? Yeah, the, the properties uh, that front onto Bartlett Avenue, uh, they have their own drainage system. Like I said, the, the rear yard of this property drain towards Bartlett, and there will be a catch basin along uh, at, the, at the south, at the northeast corner of this lot uh, to catch all the drainage of all, I think. Anyway, yeah, it, it was already in there behind this lot and the drainage uh, will proceed to be, uh, uh, be outletted to at uh, to Bartlett Avenue. So the rear yard of this lot and the entirety of all the lots on on Bartlett Avenue will outlet onto Bartlett you, on uh, only the front yard of this lot and the front of the roof of this lot will outlet out onto Park Road. Does that clarify, Herb? So it's only this lot that it's draining. It's only this lot. Yeah, but it is the front of this lot only the goes front. To the My question right. is the retaining wall, the swale that's draining this lot is going to be between the building and the edge of the retaining wall? That's correct. Okay, thank you. All right, let's call for a motion then, a move and a seconder, please. Committee members. Somebody, oh, Herb. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I would move that uh, the lot coverage uh, variants be granted, but the north setback requirement be denied. Okay, the seconder on that, so it's split. Approve the coverage, but not approve the side yard setback. Uh, Adam, seconder. Any further discussion, if any? All those in favor of that motion, so that's approve the lot coverage, but not approve the side yard. All those in favor say aye or show their hands. Opposed, if any, was carried. So there is a 20 day appeal period before it becomes final and binding. Okay, thank you. That's it for this application. Thank you for attending. Thank you. So Jane, did you understand the uh, approval or uh, she's gone? So, oh, there she is. Yeah, no, I'm a little bit confused. So okay, Jane, does so that the, mean there is going to be a three meter? Yes, there is going to be a three okay. meter. That will have okay. to be maintained. But the lot coverage, if they decide to redesign the house, the coverage can still go to 28.5%. Okay. 
Okay. I understand. Mr. Chair, Thank you. Mr. All right. Chair, yes. Yes, John. Is it possible? I've done this in other minor variance meetings where I've asked for the 1.8. The 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 setback was three. Is there something that we can go to two and a half or something as opposed to going through this application process again? I would appreciate that. Yeah. No, at this point, there is not. This is uh, the committee decided to turn down the side yard, uh, maintain it at three meters, but allow the 28% coverage. So I think you'll have to meet with Walter if there's an alternative. I mean, it was decided already. So I don't know if you can come back at the same side yard application, but I'll leave that up to Walter and staff. Okay. All right, thank you. Next one, uh, Michaela. Okay, uh, the next application we have is A3722 for 13th Lauren Avenue. Uh, it's minor variance to facilitate the construction of a single story detached dwelling with an attached garage. Uh, the variances being requested are to permit a rear yard of three meters, whereas 8.23 meters is required to permit a front yard of 7.7 .7 meters, whereas 8.71 meters is required and to permit a building depth of 21.84 meters whereas 20 meters is permitted. Uh, the site plan, uh, this was circulated on the notice hearing. Uh, renderings that were submitted with the application and included in the agenda of the proposed dwelling. Uh, the aerial photography of the neighborhood uh, to show the context of the site uh, for uh, ref just to reference the garage shown on the uh, far right is not there. Uh, the street view showing the uh, site. Again, the garage is not there. And for correspondence, uh, planning had no objections and the other agencies listed on the screen also had no comments or objections. Thanks. Thank you. Is the owner or the representative here to speak? Sarah? Yes, yes we're present. Did you like to uh, add or comment on anything, staff report or other? items before we open it up to uh, questions. Uh, I just wanted to note the garage is not there due to a house fire that we had on January 1st that took down the entire garage and part of the home. Okay, thank you. So this will be a rebuild. Complete. That's correct. Okay. Um, I guess we'll open up to the committee members first. Anybody like to ask questions or need clarification on anything? No? Uh, Tracy, I see your name. Na oh, sorry, Herb. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, the existing house um, has it looks like it has less than the 7.7 .7 meter setback now. Now, is the front yard considered on the other street? rather than the front of the house is what I'm looking at now. I'm going to ask Walter to comment. I assume it's on Diana. The front yard is Diana, correct? That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, Diana is technically line because it is the shorter of the two lot lines abutting the street. That help for her? Yeah, that, I just wanted everybody to be clarified on that because it's okay. It's a little misleading uh, when you yeah. look at it from the front of the house as to the front of the property. Thank you. 
Uh, any other questions for the committee members? If not, then I see you, Tracy. And are you here to speak to the application? Are you a neighbor? Oh, sorry, you're on mute, Tracy. She was the architect. Oh. I was involved in the sketch, and if okay. there's any like questions about anything, then I would answer them. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, then do I have a mover and a seconder on this application? There is one neighbor. Oh, there is a neighbor. Did I miss somebody? Yeah, no, I don't care. Oh, Eileen, sorry. Eileen, did you wish to address the committee or ask questions? You're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, my concern is just that uh, it looks like the back of the house is coming off close to the back of our property line and the fence there, um, which my concern is, is there's shading um, on the back of the house, on the window there, there'll be no breeze. And I'm concerned about resale of the uh, property value of it coming so close when there's frontage. Are you talking about the side yard down, I guess it would be the south side? Yeah, the, the very back of the house. I should have asked you, I, I'm, a state, I, I'm in error here. What, what's your address? 23 Diana Avenue. Okay, so you're, if I look at the map, you're to the left, south. Right. Yeah. That's so, okay. Um, Walter, I believe that's the side yard, and it, and it does comply with the bylaws. Yeah, that's that's correct. Uh, the it's that's the side yard, and it's compliant with the requirements of the zoning bylaw. Okay, did you get that, Eileen? That that is a side yard, even though it looks like the rear yard. The way the lot is facing Diana is the frontage, and then the lot fifty-seven on the map is the rear yard. So mm -hmm. that side yard does meet the zoning bylaw. So it is a side yard setback. So it is in compliance. So there is no variance on your side. So in other words, they're allowed to build to that distance, regardless of our decision here. I realize I'm just voicing, I'm just letting you know that I do have a concern that it is closer to our property line still back there. The house is going to come closer to our house. Okay, thank you for those comments. Anyone else, the committee members, questions, comments? Danielle, no? If not, then I do was, I have a, oh, sorry. I was just gonna <laughs> ask if I can make a motion. Thank yeah. you, sorry, I apologize. I was yeah, like, for ahead. a moment there. Yes, of course, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would uh, like to move submission A3722 uh, to approve all the variances um, that they are um, meeting the intent and purpose of the official plan and zoning bylaw that they are minor in nature and that they are appropriate for the uh, development of the land. Um, I do feel that these variances are appropriate and I wish the um, applicants and owners the best of luck and I apologize for, uh, for any hardship that you've had with the fire of, uh, of your house, so. Thank you. Thank you. Seconder, Dylan, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye or raise their hand. Opposed, if any, was carried. So it was approved um, as submitted, and there is a 20-day appeal period before it becomes final and binding. Thank you for attending tonight. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next application is uh, A3822-247 Heisert Road. Hi everyone. Uh, the next application we have is um, A3822. Uh, this is for 247 Heisert Road. 
Some minor variants facilitate the construction of a two-story detached dwelling with an attached garage. Uh, the variances being requested are to permit an interior side yard um, on the north of 1.8 meters, whereas three meters is required, and to permit an interior side yard on the south of 1.8 meters, whereas three meters um, is required. Um, here is the site plan that was submitted with the application, uh, the same one that was circulated on the notice of, notice of hearing. Uh, aerial imagery of the site and the surrounding area, uh, just to show the context of the neighborhood. Uh, street view uh, taken October 2021. Uh, for correspondence uh, from planning, there are no objections. Uh, from public works, no comments. From fire, no comments. Uh, from the region, they just note that the drawings for the minor variance application match the drawings on the septic permit application, and therefore they have no objections. Uh, from the Conservation Authority, no objections. Uh, from Heritage, no objections. CN Rail, no objections. Grimsby Power, no comments. Um, there was a letter from a neighbor at 245 Heiser. Uh, I believe they are here today, but their letter outlines concerns with overlook, uh, privacy impacts on their outdoor amenity space, drainage and runoff, impact on real estate value, and concerns with precedent setting. There was another letter from a neighbor at 245 Heiser, uh, and they outlined concerns with proximity to the adjacent pro property, uh, precedent setting, and privacy. Uh, there were also signatures in support from neighbors uh, this was submitted by the applicant, and the signatures came from 251, 248, 243, 258, Thanks, Michaela. Um, is the owner or the representative here that we're going to speak to the comments uh, and letters raised? Yes, I am. Is it Monica? Yes, it is Monica. Okay. So Monica Vincent at 247 Heisert Road. Um, I did specifically want to speak to the comments raised by the neighbor at 245, um, just addressing some of the questions that they had raised. So first question um, was with regards to a two-story living space above the garage with three windows overlooking their property. Um, there are actually only two windows above the garage and those two windows are actually overlooking um, the side of the home at 245 Heisert, not the backyard. Um, if you look at where the new house will be located, it's located in the same spot the current house is. Um, as well, the windows are actually more than three meters from the property line. Um, and they are in low traffic areas. One is in the ensuite and one is in the closet. Um, and they're just to allow more natural light into the home as we're trying to build an energy efficient home. Um, the second concern that they raised was access to the backyard. Um, the garage is actually going to be in the same spot that the garage is currently. And right now when we have to access the backyard for things like mulch or dirt or tree trimming, um, we have a driveway beside the garage that is actually closer to the property line. Um, and that's what we use currently. So that access is not changing. We're not adding anything that isn't already there. Um, the third question they that they raise is about drainage. Um, my comment there is that we are following all the requirements that the town of Grimsby has set out for us um, and they are shown on the, the drawing. Um, and secondly, the whole road, all of the roads up there actually slope from north to south from Ridge Road um, down to Kemp Road. And as such, um, their property would actually drain onto our property, not, not vice versa. Like the water doesn't run uphill. So um, I think with the with the requirements that the town has set out as, as well as that, we, we meet that. 
um, with regards to proximity to the property line, it's only the northwest corner of the garage that will be at the 1.8 meters. The majority of the north side of the building will actually be greater than three meters from the property line. Um, there is a, a triangle basically of building that will be between the 1.8 and three meters and it's about a just over seven foot stretch um, that is along that line and the rest as I said is actually more than three meters away. Um, as far as precedent setting and the ability to sell their home and the property value, um, when homes in a neighborhood are rebuilt or, or renovated, it typically increases property values, not decreases. Um, and with regards to setting the precedent, if you already go up the street around the corner to 665 Ridge Road, where a new house has been built, um, there's already homes that are being built that are closer than the three meters to the property line. I don't think this is a new precedent. I think this has been happening for a while. There is a reference to other homes on the street that have been rebuilt without needing to um, apply for a minor variance, which is true. Um, however, those properties are, are wider. They have a, a 200 or 400 foot frontage as opposed to the 100 foot frontage that we have. And my final comment is, you know, it is mentioned in the letter that we are doing this just because we can. Um, and that isn't the case. We are doing this to uh, accommodate a main floor um, in law suite for my parents. Um, they're 75 years old. They've lived on the property and poured their hearts into it for the last 44 years. And we would like to keep them there. Um, and not just for today, like we're building their suite with, you know, wider doorways so that if they ever need wheelchair or um, a walker that, that will fit, um, we're having a second bedroom in case we ever in the future need to have additional like nursing staff or anything to help look after them. Um, my dad's had two knee replacements already. Um, we can't put them on the second level. So we're trying to take advantage of the full width of the lot in order to accommodate that. Thank you for your time and for considering our application. Thank you. Um, all right, first I'll open it up to the committee members. Any questions for the applicant? No? All right, then we have members of the uh, public. Can we just get your name and address for the record? You can start with Tammy. It says Tammy on the screen. Yes. Thank you. Um, it's Tammy and John Dirksen at 245 Heiser Road. Sorry, we, we missed a titch of Monica's um, points there. So if we duplicate something, I'm sorry, um, our internet went right at the end there, um, unfortunately. Um, we just we just want to reiterate what was said in in the letter um, and, and and say I mean I, I understand that um, uh, that Monica was saying that there's that is a corner but the corner then allows for the overlook and and to say that the overlook is just at the side of our house well when it's on an angle it's not just looking at the side of our house it is overlooking um our back and um space and it's two stories though. and it's two stories so obviously it looks over the top of a one story yes. on this side um so it, it isn't as simple as uh as that unfortunately um yet the um there is a drive as you said like those sort of access at the side there up i think we lost them they froze Give it a second. Tammy, I don't know if you can hear us, but you froze. Perhaps try removing the video and just do the audio if you want to, if you can hear me. Otherwise, we'll come back to you and then Jeremy. Sorry to jump around here, but Jeremy, did could you uh, give us your name and address for the record? Yeah, uh, my name is Maximilian Thomas, uh, and I'm with the agent, so uh, I have no further comments. Oh, than okay. What Monica said. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, they got cut off or disappeared, but we do have their letter on file and the start of their proposal. So, uh, any other questions from the committee members? 
or Walter? Herb? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, is iPhone 12 uh, opposed or what's, what's the uh, I think he's I it? think he's the builder, so he's here to answer technical okay. questions, I'm assuming. Yeah. Bill? Okay. Uh, my question is then... Which will come from you, I know, Herb. <laughs> <laughs> why does the garage have to be on the angle like that? Phil, maybe you can answer that or... Sorry, one second. I'm doing this on my phone. Close. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, so did you hear the question, Phil? Yeah. Yes, I did hear the question. Um, that is more, really more a question for the Vincents. I, I didn't design the house per se, um, more the builder for it. So um, I, I don't think I that question. Okay. May Maybe I? the Vince, Vincents can answer that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, it, it was partly, um, yeah, the look of the house and partly because then um, the way the home is being set up, the uh, suite for my parents is on the south side of the property. Um, and they we wanted them to be able to come out of the garage onto the covered porch um, and be able to go straight into uh, their part of the house without having to um, come out the driveway and around. And by angling that, um, it allows them access. And by angling that, um, it allows them access to the porch. Um, and secondly, you know, again, Tammy is bringing up the fact that the, the second story looks into their backyard, but where, where the garage is angled, it's angled towards the front of their property. It's not looking into the backyard. Like our, the main body of the building, if you look at the drawing and the current, um, you know, overhead shot that Michaela showed at the beginning, the house is going to be in line with where it is currently. So that garage is angling forward from the house. It's, there isn't a view into their backyard. Um, it is looking at the side of their house, not, not the backyard. Um, from where it's situated. Thank you. Uh, Herb. Uh, um, Mr. Chair, through you, could we get the uh, floor plan or the uh, layout, the lot plan uh, with the, the house plan? on it on the screen again? Yeah, Michaela? Are they trying to get in, by the way? I just emailed. Okay. She, just give her a sec. She'll put the site plan up. And if we could zoom zoom in on it uh, as well on that north portion. Okay, my my understanding of what their concern was or is the windows that are in the house on the second story. Um, that will be looking into their backyard, not the windows off the garage. Well, the so windows on the, on the second story. Well, the windows on the second story would look straight back, not onto their property at all. Like the windows in the on the back of the is house there, on the second is story. There, is there no no windows on the second story on the north wall? No. No, just on the angled garage. Just on the angled garage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Michaela, thank you. I don't know if Michaela has the elevations there for the house, but you can see it better on the elevations of the house. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to just suggest there's one showing that elevation, I believe. And yeah. I thought there were windows in the back of the second story, but not the the third garage. Just the, oh, it's disappeared. It's going to be elevated. Oh, getting the elevation. You're back, Tammy? Yes, I'm sorry. We completely lost internet, so... It's okay. Um, I would, I, we're just going to, we just have some questions we're going through before we'll allow you to continue, but perhaps do the audio and not video just to save yeah, bandwidth. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Just give, bear with us for a second. We're just pulling up the site plan. Okay.
So we need the other side. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So there. So there. So the two windows above the on, garage on the second story, you can see the back door there. There's two, two there. And then the two windows that are on that side of the house are on the first level. They're not on the second level. Right. But I think her concern is those two windows on the second floor of the garage that kind of face on an angle. So they would. Yeah, but they're guess, not. You know, they, they're, they're the ones that are looking into the backyard. Right. They're not. Yes. On a 45. Um, yeah, but it's it's more like when when you see where the new our house is in comparison to their house, it would be looking at the side. It's far enough forward that it's looking at the side of their house and not into the backyard. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through the questions first. and We'll go back to Tammy. Uh, Adam, I believe, was next. Do you have a question or comment? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know the... Uh applicant explained the rationale behind the um, angle garage, but I just wonder if they explored the idea of actually going further with the building depth and so they wouldn't actually have to get that close to the, uh, the side yards. Because there is a lot of room to work with on the depth side. Yeah, I believe it's 400 foot depth lot. It is. Um, we're trying to make room for the septic in the front yard. And then as far as the back is concerned, if you look at the aerial view um, between the first um, 200 feet of the yard and the back 200 feet of the yard, there is a natural swale that is there. And so we're trying to balance um, making room for the septic that is required for the house, um, keeping the drainage that's there in place. Um, so that we don't interrupt anything that's already there. Um, yeah. Now, do you, can you pop the um, aerial up, Kayla? There was one screen that showed the aerial view oh, in your presentation. Because it looks like it's a deeper lot than the adjacent to the <coughs> south. That one. So uh, I think it's to the south. 251 is a shallower lot. Yours is deeper, similar to all the ones to the north. Is that correct? That's correct. 251 is is um, is shallower and wider, and then ours is longer and narrower. But you can see right in the middle of that um, view, like right where it says 247 pretty much, that gray area there, that's a whole natural swale that's there that we're trying to maintain. Was this always part of the same lot? Because I looked at oh, Geo Warehouse, yeah. it looked like there was two act, there was two purchases: the the house yeah. and then half an acre at the back from the farmer. Yeah. So yeah, which which two forty five did the same thing um, at the same time. Uh, both lots were one hundred by two hundred, and then in nineteen ninety one, um, my dad and um, uh, Tammy's father went to the farmer and asked about purchasing the second half. So that was done in around ninety one. Uh, who had their hand up? Dylan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to get clarification on what you said. Um, sorry, to the applicant, to the clarification of what you said regarding access to the back of the property. Yes. So, so if, if please tell me if I'm wrong. So, the building as it's proposed is going, you're proposing it be 1.8 meters on both sides. Correct. But access. Would you would basically maintain a pathway basically along the is it the south side that would be 1.8 meters? Well, the, yeah, the south side is 1.8 meters the whole length of the building. The north side is only 1.8 meters at the very corner right. of the garage yeah. at the front. What okay. we're planning to do is put a door through the back of the garage. So there'll be a door at the front of the garage and a door at the back of the garage. And if we need to access the backyard that we're able to drive through the garage. Okay. So, um, so okay. Yeah. Just wanted clarification because I was didn't quite understand where would, there would be room for this sort oh, of no, no, no. Sorry, pathway that's, through. So yes, yeah, yeah. No, it would be through the garage. Okay, thank you. Um, no other questions. Are there any uh, Tammy? Did you wish to continue? Yes, please. Um, sorry, I feel like my um, sorry. I think is a little distant here. Um, but um, 
sorry, I'm going to hop on just a couple of things that we heard there before I go back to where we were. Um, Monica mentioning that that natural scale. Um, that, that's a tricky piece of the property as well. It's not as simple as as that being a scale for them um, because of that lot being uh, that extra half acre added onto both of our properties. Um, you notice on the map, the other properties along the road um, were already longer than ours when we purchased that. So the, side, the property beside us does not have a swale. So they chose to, to definitely um, enunciate yeah. that, that swale. We did not because that did not work with the property beside ours. So, you know, it's, it's a tricky thing. It is what it is with the, with the field, but, but, um, but calling that a swale is, is, I mean, it works for them, but it's not the way that the property goes all the way down the road. Um, and then speaking to your um, comment about the drainage itself, um, talking about building up, um, your property is higher than ours and we are flooded every spring in the back. So it's not uh, along the back part of our property. So to say that you're going, you're higher and you're keeping the natural, I, I think that you need to be um, aware that, that it isn't quite as simple as that. Um, so that is a concern that we have had um, for a very long time. So we would definitely like things to stay at least where they are, definitely not getting higher than uh, what we have right now. Um, and uh, the value, I mean, you, you can speak to the value definitely if people, neighborhoods are building up. I understand that you're saying that, you know, value can increase, but um, back to our concern where you're saying you're looking at the side of our house and one of the gentlemen who spoke, I'm sorry, I'm not sure who it was, but, but when you're talking about being on an angle, then definitely you're looking into our space. Um, I think that you are lucky enough to be able to now build a beautiful covered patio with your brand new hot tub that will go in it, but you will still be able to look into my hot tub, my patio, and, and I, I can't change that. So that's where we're coming from. This, this is not about um, having, having a fight with our neighbors, but we have worked so hard to build this space and have this here. And we're just having trouble understanding why you would be building on on an angle when you have the space that you have that that's where we're coming from it just it it's it feels like it, it hurts I guess is, is the best way to put it and I mean I understand that maybe the town of Grimsby doesn't doesn't see it that way but that's how it feels for us um so that sort of sums up you you've seen our letter you've you've yeah. um discussed what we sort of thought um and, and, and thank you thank you in our front property for the for the, the property being built up on their side it's actually kind of pushing pushing up underneath their fence and pushing the fence on an angle into our property so as 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 natural as it is for for grade from ridge road down through to camp road we are between the two properties on on uh, on 247 and 245 mm -hmm. or 243 we are the lowest of the of the three properties and it's unfortunate that, that has to be that way that's all thank you chair okay thank you very much for your comments and for keeping it within the time limit any other questions for the committee members or comments uh herb uh yes mr chair through you to walter um is there going to be a lot grading pro uh plan for this project as well Walter. Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, yes, there is. Uh, the grading plan is plan that was uh, illustrated uh, in uh, um, uh, Michaela's uh, presentation. So, yeah, the uh, grading plan will be required uh, to be okay. prior to a building permit being issued. Okay, and and that grading plan is examined and uh, made sure that no uh, drainage is going on to the neighbor's property and and is inspected and and certified uh, that it's built correctly. Is that uh, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, there is also a bond required to be deposited with the town uh, prior to construction, prior to the building permit being issued, and. Uh, that enables our um, engineering staff to, uh, number one, review the plan, make sure it works, uh, doesn't impact negatively impact neighboring properties, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, sometimes uh, new construction improves drainage on uh, uh, between properties um, because we get an opportunity to review it and correct past mistakes. And, uh, and the bond won't be released until uh, the inspection is done and then uh, uh, released to the, to, the, to the homeowner or builder. Thank you, Walter. Any other questions from the committee members or comments about this one? Uh, we've got letters from owners on both sides. I, I, I kind of feel, I don't know, to be consistent, it's similar to the Park Road one where it's a 100 foot wide lot. If you can't build it, you haven't shown hardship. It's a square lot. You've got lots of depth. Um, prove that the, you know, it's a corner lot or it's irregular in shape or the other, but we've got letters from both owners on both sides who are impacted. These are big country lots. I think three meters is not unreasonable to be maintained. Um, I get it. You want to build a bigger house, but I, I don't know. I think I have concerns and, and it's about consistency too, with the previous application that we had. Um, those are my comments, but I'll, I'll open it up to the members to make a motion or uh, add additional comments. Danielle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm I'm of the same opinion. Um, you know, reading through the the information presented to us again, I'm not hearing where the hardship is. Um, I don't see anything that's special about this property as to why they need a reduced side yard setback. Um, it's a large enough lot. Uh, there should be no reason why a house cannot be designed to suit um, the needs of the family, um, as well as uh, complying with the zoning requirements. Um, at, so at this point in time, I'm, I'm not going to be supportive of the application. Um, they should be able to build within the zoning requirements and, and complying with the zoning bylaw while um, meeting the requirements of the bylaw and, uh, and their family's needs at the same time. So um, those are my, my comments at this time, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Dylan? Sorry, I would be prepared to move a motion. Okay, go ahead. I'd like to move that the um, sorry that the minor variance application A thirty eight dash twenty two be denied um, for the reasoning in that um, it does not meet the intent of the zoning bylaw, uh, nor is it considered minor. Seconder. Danielle, oh. any further comments? All those in favor to deny, raise your hand. Opposed, if any, was carried. So unfortunately it was denied. Uh, there is a 20 day appeal period before it becomes final and binding. Thank you for attending this evening. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. The next application is 430 Robinson Street North, but I believe they're all similar or related. So maybe, I don't know if you have one staff report that we can maybe cover them off in. Uh, Kevin, they are all separate staff reports. Uh, we don't have any delegates though. So okay. we'll just go through them one by one. So we'll go through them one by one, but keep in mind the time and, and the fact there's no delegates um, and they're relatively similar. The issues in all of them. Thank you, Bianca or yeah, Michaela. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just go through these ones uh, separately and have the separate division uh, decisions. Uh, made. So we'll start with 3222, 430 Robinson Street North, lot one, minor variances to facilitate the construction of a semi detached um, two and a half story dwelling. Um, the variances requested are to permit a front yard setback of 1.5 meters, whereas 1.6 is required, permit a maximum building length of 22 meters, whereas 20, is, 20 meters is permitted. 
uh, to permit a rear yard setback of two meters, whereas four meters is required. Uh, to permit a building height of 11.1 .1 meters, whereas 10 meters is permitted. Um, and I just would like to point out there was uh, an additional report included in the agenda regarding this building height. Uh, the next variance is to permit a garage door um, of 84% of the building width, whereas 50% of the building width is permitted. And to um, permit a driveway width of six meters, whereas three meters is permitted for a lot with a frontage of less than nine meters. Uh, so this is the site plan. Uh, it's the same one that was circulated on the notice. Um, you'll see that um, this is a corner lot and it is a uh, it's going to be a semi-detached dwelling with the lot to the east, so to the right. Um, so just to keep that in mind. Uh, this is the aerial photography, just showing the context of the neighborhood. Um, it's a better um, view that 430 Robinson, the one we're discussing, um, is semi-detached with the lot uh, known as 8 Lake Street. Um, and then some photographs of the current site. Uh, so the one on the left was from November, 2021. Uh, and we also got a photo from today, uh, which also includes the new um, part of the new road. So you can see the relationship of the house with the curb. Uh, for correspondence, um, uh, planning has no objections, uh, and there was the note that the height variance is not required, um, and it can be removed from the application. From Public Works, no objections. Fire, no objections. NPCA, no objections. Heritage, no objections. CN Rail and Grimsby Power, both no objections. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. Is the owner or the applicant here to uh, elaborate on the application? Is it Craig? Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Craig Rowe from Upper Canada Consultants. Uh, we're located at 30 Hanover Drive in the city of St. Catharines. Um, I prepared a brief little bit of a slide deck, and, and I think just because we have no, no one from the public here, if you wouldn't mind, I, I'll just take you through it visually so you can understand a little bit, and it'll help me kind of explain where we're going with this property, which has been seemed like it's been under development for, for a very long time. So let me just bring this up here. Okay, so uh, we originally had four applications that were proposed um, and, and they were around the Robinson Street North and, and Lake Street in, in the town of Grimsby. Uh, so that, that corner property that has existed at the corner of Robinson and Lake, it's on that and the surrounding property has undergone a draft plan of subdivision, which has been approved and registered and also site specific zoning. Uh, and the overall intent for the properties was to turn that existing structure into a semi-detached dwelling. So 430 Robinson and 8 Lake to the east, forming two separate dwelling structures. And then there's two blocks for development south of that, which represent those Robinson Street properties known as Block 3 and Block 4 in your agenda package. So the applications that we have filed for 430 Robinson deal with an existing structure that has a foundation poured in place. Um, we've withdrawn application A3322, which was the 8 Lake Street, because it's been uh, determined by staff that the height falls within the necessary parameters. Uh, and then applications A34 and A35 deal with the proposed semi-detached dwellings, which are going to be created on the block south of that existing structure. So this is 430 Lake, or 430 Robinson. This is 8 Lake, which has been withdrawn. And then these are the two blocks, which will each also have semi-detached dwellings on them. So with regard to 8 Lake Street, I'll walk you through the, the variances. So unfortunately, um, the owner of the property proceeded with construction, which was not in conformity with the zoning bylaw. Work has been stopped, uh, and he's had to rectify that through this application. So with regard to a lot of the physical setbacks to the structure, that foundation is poured and it is in the ground. Um, so in this front corner here, it was poured uh, a meter or sorry, 0.1 meters closer to the road than it should have been up in the front corner. 
Uh, part of their plans included a plan for a double car garage in a wider driveway down at the south end of the property. So rather than adhering to that uh, 20 meter maximum building length, they erroneously made it 22 meters in length, which accommodated for that extra area. So that garage is located here. And then the uh, extra large driveway width is being asked for in this location. Uh, and then the, the garage width as well. Um, so, so one of the things that I did want to point out is that there was the, the note in, in staff's slides that were asking for 84% of, of the dwelling width um, for, for our garage. The width is measured uh, from east to west because this is the front yard. So not to be confused with, we're not asking for 84% of the length to be a garage door, just as, as a point of clarity uh, on that. Uh, and by building that foundation uh, additionally long, uh, they're unable to meet the four meter setback and now they're at uh, two meters or, or just over two meters. Um, that is still sufficient area. It's gonna present itself as a side yard condition towards Robinson Street, uh, similar side condition to the other uh, dwellings that are proposed south of it. Uh, and the garages are gonna be consistent as well. So um, we, we don't feel that's incompatible. So this was a, a picture I took about a month ago. Uh, so you can see this is the foundation. The back of it has been poured. This is the garage area, the existing structure. That's the other second half of the semi. And then out of view behind the camera is where block three and block four are going to be. And this is just a, a caption of this. I figure I'll just run you through it all so we can move into the, the separate applications. All we're asking for for each of these blocks is for a wider garage and a wider driveway. And the reason for this is that as Robinson Road has recently be, been reconstructed, um, there's no on-street parking that has been permitted through that reconstruction exercise. So if these folks have visitors over, there's nowhere for them to park uh, other than the driveway. And of course, we don't want them blocking Robinson Street. It also provides uh, a route to the region sewage pumping station. So that route does need to remain clear. So given that most of the dwellings in the surrounding neighborhood do have car and a half or double car garages, we feel this is an appropriate request to, to be made to get it in place prior to going to construction, unlike was unfortunately done with uh, with the existing structure, uh, but but certainly will help alleviate any pressures for on-street parking in the area. And we feel that because this isn't a through road, there's not a lot of traffic there. Um, it'll be aesthetically pleasing, but not a lot of people are gonna see it unless they're walking down the road, taking the dog out or, or something of that nature. So um, this slide just duplicates the same. These these are the variances that, that have been requested. So. Um, I have these aides on standby if, if the committee members should like me to bring them up at any time during our applications, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the committee members? So that one house, the, the old house is going to remain? That would be my question. Yes, uh, to you, Mr. Chair, it is. It was under construction, but it had to stop to rectify the zoning. Uh, so with these permissions in place, it will be legal and they can complete the construction of that semi-detached dwelling. Dylan? Actually, I think Danielle had her hand oh, up first. Sorry. Sure. Danielle? That's a, that's, sorry about sorry. that. I throw the physical hand up because my mouse yeah. is battery dying. So it's a slow click clicker. I apologize. Um, no thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have one question. Um, I'm not too sure if this would be best answered by staff or the applicant. Just with respects to the variance on the garage door width. Um, Based on the facade um, that we have of that elevation, I think it's the left slash east elevation. Um, it, is it because the way that the, I'm going to use my hands because it's hard to describe over video. Um, is it because the way that the one wall projects forward and the garage wall is recessed back and the garage wall is located on that facade wall, um, that it's 84%, and but visually it's going to look a lot less, or am I looking at the wrong plan? Because I see Walter shaking his head, I apologize. Walter? It's, it's okay, the 84% the is, uh, it's 84% of the width of the Lake Street wall, not the Robinson Street wall. So that's the short, well, that's why it's 84%. But uh, the garage is basically on the broad side of the building. Okay. We'll probably on that side, on the side the garage is on, the, uh, the percentage will be probably something like 20% or less. 
Okay, so then I it's apologize. I do not see the elevation of the lake side. Yeah, so that would be in the on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? That would be the first plan. The first plan, right after the town memo, staff memo. So front so elevation lake side? Yes. Or lake Street, yes. Lake Street, sorry. So it's, a percentage, elevation north. it's a percentage of the width of this wall. Oh, I understand now. Oh, because, I saw the light bulb. <laughs> thank you. I have to see. Okay. So because even though the garage is located on a different facade, yeah, you still have to take the calculation from the lake side. I, yeah, I, unfortunately, yeah. that's how the bylaws worded. Yeah. I, yeah. That was where my confusion lies as to where we got such a large number. Because even just yeah. visually looking at that facade, even if we took the recessed facade for, portion, it didn't look like 80 something percent. So I appreciate yeah. the clarification. That was my only question All right. um, with respects to it. Um, and I, oh, sorry, I did have another question because we did get an amended staff report. Um, I saw in Craig in your presentation, there is not a need for the 11 meter height variance anymore because it's an existing situation. We don't need to recognize it, correct? No, no, the, the building is measured. Oh, sorry, the, the, the actual, uh, the, the calculation was done incorrectly to okay. a, that 11.1 .1 number because- okay. That's from the average grade at Lake Street for both lot one and two. Okay. Highest point of the peak, which is not how the uh, the measurement is to, to take place. It's okay. The because the grade. it's the average grade. It's the average grade of the front wall of lot one, which is just this unit, to okay. the midpoint of the roof, which is uh, like eight meters or maybe even less than that. Okay, so that removes the variance. So we only need the front yard, the building length, the rear yard, garage door, and driveway with them. So it removes the one. Okay, I understand. Thank you for the clarification, everyone. Those are my questions for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Then I'll go to Dylan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just for Mr. Rowe, just so I'm clear. So for the lot one that we're talking about, not, the, not um, three and four. Or sorry, yeah, three and four. But for lot one, so the very the variances are requested because there was errors in in the initial building. Am I am I summarizing that correctly? Walter can maybe I, explain that. Or sorry, I apologize. Whomever yeah. is best to speak. I was to it, I, I was here when it was done. <laughs> um, yeah, Craig, I don't think you were part of that or initial application. But anyway, when the zoning application was done, the uh, the building plans were slightly different. And then when the engineering plans came in, uh, they, they were modified. Um, and the northwest corner is, is just a, a slight error in terms of paying that was done. Uh, the, the, the location of the garage and the width of the garage. The, the garage is necessary to be wider. The original garage proposal was like a, a garage and a half. So it was two meters narrower than, than this particular garage. But the garage needs to be wider in order to accommodate the two required parking spaces required by the zoning bylaw. Okay. As you see, the driveway isn't long enough on the property itself to accommodate parking spaces. So the required parking spaces are actually in the garage and the garage needs to be wider in order to accommodate them. That's, that's why the, the garage needed to be widened by two meters to accommodate two meters. And therefore, by doing that, you lengthen the building by two buildings meters, you shorten, and you shorten the rear yard by two meters okay so one thing sort of cascades exactly to another and okay and and sorry and just so i'm clear on what you said so in order to meet the two car minimum it that's actually inside of the the, of the garage it's not yep. just the driveway yeah. and the garage it's that's right the driveway is <laughs> only the driveway is only like three meters long on the property okay so the parking spaces are actually in the building yeah have to be in the building okay all right, thank you for thank the clarification. You. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, Herb, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Could we get the uh, subdivision plan on the screen, if that's possible? Kayla? Um, I believe Craig has a better uh, image I saw on his slide deck. Craig, do you want to try again? Actually, I was looking uh, for it. To, to be clear, are, are we looking for 
the the, the plan the of subdivision or the actual, no, the, the, actual the overall plan, plan with all the lots yeah yes okay yeah just the give plan of subdivision mm -hmm. yeah i can get that from our files just a second i think you had it in your powerpoint greg yeah uh no those were plot plans but uh, i think that's what he was talking about though herb you wanted the plot yes. plans that were shown well, earlier in his it shows the proposal. lots shows the this lots is, this is no the i was looking for the the, the plan of subdivision that that is uh, the plan i think you want the plot plan though you, you want you want the you want the plan that shows the building footprints right yes yeah so it was in your earlier presentation craig This one? Yes. The, yes. Now, now, this this a portion to the north of the pink is that's where the garage is being placed. Is that correct? Through Mr. Chair, and, yes, and, that, that is the location of the existing structure. And that is part of number eight. It's not two separate buildings. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, this is 430, uh, 430 Robinson. And then this is 428, 26. Yes. 24, yes. 22. No, but I'm, I'm 430. Is 430 is part of number uh, eight Lake Street. Is that yes. correct? So, sir, do you have it's another one, shot, Craig? Yeah, it's attached. It's attached to eight Lake Street. It's not. Yes, it's it's attached to it, but is it a separate uh, residence? It, it will be. A, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, it is a separate lot. Legally, okay, that's, it needs to be constructed for occupancy, though. That's what I'm getting at. This this number eight and this on uh, Robinson are two separate dwellings. Is that correct? Yes, Eight Lake here, four thirty Robinson yes. here. Yes. Okay, the so property. this this variance is not for the frontage of Lake Street, but for the garage. This garage is for this building uh, on the separate lot on on uh, Robinson. So I'm just confused why the width is is uh, an issue with this garage here. If it's not part of Lake Street property, it's a separate lot by itself. I think Walter can answer that. It was a definitional uh, thing because of the yeah. the Lake Street is the lot frontage because it's the shortest lot line abutting a street. So that's so, what's used yeah. to measure the width of the garage, even though the garage faces on Robinson. Is that correct, no. Walter? Yeah, so not, Craig, it's, so, it's not so Craig, part Yeah, sorry, of, sorry, sorry, Mr. Nobes. I, I'm just trying to answer the question here. So okay. could you zoom in on that on lot one so we can see the entirety of lot one? We, so we can get the whole thing there we go okay yeah right. so see the number one that's where the existing two-story house is right so they're adding to the back of the house for uh, an addition plus the garage the garage faces robinson street for the house that's also on the house now is facing lake street but the front door will be will be on robinson street it's a corner lot right and 8 Lake Street is where it says lot two. So lot two, the building on lot two will be attached to the existing lot one. And it will have its driveway and garage off of Lake Street. The front door of lot two will face Lake Street so that its address will be Lake Street. The front door of lot one will, will, oops, will, be facing, will be facing Robinson Street. That's why the address is Robinson Street, Street, and the garage for Lot One also faces Robinson Street. Yes. Does that clarify it? And okay, the garage that, that clarified it. This and the garage and the garage needed to be wider in order to accommodate two cars to meet the zoning requirement for parking. Yes. Okay. That, that help? so the the Lot One and the garage area on Robinson Street is one residence. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, that's what I was trying that's to get right at. There. That's is a lot right this, there. this is one residence in here. That's because correct. Before I was saying it, it was two. 
No, it's but, but, uh, <laughs> but it's it's the blocks three and block yep. four that are going to have two residents on them. Lot three and lot four are going to have two residences each. There will be uh, us yes. two semis on each. Yes, other. that's what I was getting at. And the, but the lot, semi lot one does not. Okay, the that answers lot, the question. That's Thank right. You. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Sorry, I can't see the full screen here. Okay, there we go. Herb, your hand's still up, just FYI. Anybody else? If not, then there's no uh, uh, members of the public, no delegation. So do we have a motion then on this application or this uh, request? With reasons? Danielle looks like she's leaning in to All take right. mute off. There we go. Yes, so Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, yes, hold on one second. I apologize. I would like to make a motion. Just pulling up the resolution now. Uh, there we go. Um, I would like to move with an amended resolution based on the resolutions that were circulated uh, today, removing the maximum building height variance, um, but approving the remaining five variances um, that they do meet the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and official plan, that they are minor in nature, and that they are appropriate for the development of the subject lands. Thank you. A seconder. Dylan, any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, if any, was carried. So it was approved subject to the 20 day appeal period, but I guess you'll be back for the next uh, variances are coming up, which are A3422 and A3522. I guess we'll have to deal with them separately again. I'll let Michaela go through them. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so we have eight. A3322 for 8 Lake Street, that was withdrawn. So we'll just skip through to the next one. So we'll go to A3422. So this is 426 and 428 Robinson Street North, um, block three. So this is a minor variance to facilitate the construction of a semi-detached two-story dwelling. Um, I know we've already kind of discussed this uh, through Craig's presentation. Uh, but just to recap, it's to permit a driveway width of 4.9 meters, whereas 4.6 meters is permitted with a lot uh, with a lot frontage between 9 meters and 11 meters. And this would apply to the southern unit. Uh, also to permit a garage door width of 62% of the building width, whereas 50% of the building width is permitted. Um, this would be for the southern unit and to permit a garage door width of 65% of the building width, whereas 50% of the building width is permitted. Um, this would apply to the northern unit. Uh, so the site plan permitted, uh, just for context, up here is 430 Robinson that we just discussed. Um, this side is 8 Lake that was withdrawn. Uh, so we're discussing block 3, which is kind of like the middle lot. Um, Uh, some renderings that were submitted with the application. Um, the site context. So here it shows that it's uh, the center plot. Uh, photo taken by town staff today. Um, this is taken from the south um, side. So we can see 430 Robinson and 8 Lake in the photo. Um, on the left side. Uh, for correspondence from planning, there were no objections. And actually from all of these agencies listed, there were no comments or objections. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. Chair, uh, Craig. in the interest of time, would it be appropriate to uh, also do the other presentation? I, I think that would be a great idea because they're very similar in nature. So go ahead. Michaela. Um, so basically the same again. Sorry, Chair, could you mute, please? Thank you. 
and Michaela unmuted. Yeah, I that was strange. I was muted. Um, okay. Yeah, so pretty similar to what we just discussed. Again, construction of semi-detached uh, semi two-story dwelling, uh, permitting a driveway width of 4.9 meters, whereas 4.6 is permitted uh, for a lot frontage between 9 and 11 meters. Uh, this applies to the northern unit. Uh, then to permit a garage door with a width of 62 meters uh, of the building width, whereas 50% is permitted. This is for the southern unit. Uh, and then to permit a garage door width of 65% of the building width, whereas 50% of the building width is permitted. Uh, and that's for the northern unit. So this is the most south, most south um, lot or block, I mean of the ones that we've been discussing. Um, again, the perspective or the front perspective rendering. Uh, and then just uh, to further clarify, it is the uh, lot that is further south. Uh, same photo as before, showing the current site as of this morning. Um, and again, for correspondence, there were no objections or comments from any of the listed agencies. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Michaela. Uh, Craig, did you wish to outline or summarize uh, the request? Nothing to add, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the committee? Danielle? Can I just make a motion? You can. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you want to do one or? Yeah, we'll do one first. So uh, I would, would like be... to do them separately just because the variances are slightly different. Yep. Um, if possible, please. And just to keep it clear for any ambiguity moving forward. Um, so this is just with respects to the first application, A3422. Um, I move that the three variances are uh, meeting the four tests that they are meeting the intent and purpose of the official plan and zoning bylaw, um, that they are minor in nature and that they are deemed appropriate for the development and use of the lands. Um, no conditions um, based on the resolution that was circulated. And that would be for 426 and 428 Robinson. Just thank making you. sure I have yep. the correct resolution in front of me. Sorry, yep. thank you. You do. Uh, seconder, raise your hand. Adam, thank you. Any further discussion on this uh, motion? All those in favor say aye or raise their hand. Opposed if any was carried. So that's for A3422 and then for A3522. We have a mover, mover and a seconder. I would just like to continue on if oh, possible. Okay. Oh, sorry, Dale, Dylan, you had your hand up. I apologize. Yeah, <laughs> uh, sorry. Just to resolve this mission, A3522 also meets the four tests that it is minor in nature. It's appropriate for the development and use of lands and that it does meet the intent and purpose of the official plan and zoning bylaw, Mr. Chair. Um, Thank you. I circulated for, and this is the address for 422 and 424 Robinson Street North. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. A seconder, Dylan. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye or raise their hand. Opposed, if any. It was carried. So they were approved as well. Thank you for attending. I believe that's it. Um, there is a 20 day appeal period before it becomes final. But just have a quick question for you, Craig, though. Why are they keeping that existing building on the corner? You've got some beautiful houses proposed here. And I'm looking at that thing going, okay, I don't get it. Am I missing something? Other than he's got an attachment to it, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Thanks for your time tonight. Appreciate All right, thank it. you. Reuse and repurpose, Kevin. All right, all right. It's not heritage, so Bianca. Bianca. <laughs> Keep the landfills empty. <laughs> thank you. And then the next application then is for 194 Wolverton Road. And I'll go on mute and let Michaela. Uh, Colin and Andrea, are you here? Hello. Yes, Michaela, I'm, I'm here. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the next application we have is A3022 for 194 Wolverton Road. 
uh, the variances are to facilitate the use of an existing industrial building for a pallet material handling facility or a refrigeration, humidity, and airflow management facility. Variance that's being requested is a variance to section 6.1.1 of the zoning bylaw 1445. And this is to provide relief to the list of permitted uses in the specialty crop zone as uh, shown on table six, specifically to add a pallet material handling facility or a refrigeration, humidity, and airflow management facility as use is permitted on this property in the specialty crop zone. Uh, here's the site plan that was submitted with the application. Um, on the uh, right bottom corner is the existing building that's uh, proposed to be um, kept and used. Uh, the aerial photography of the site, just showing the context of the neighborhood and the uh, uses uh, surrounding. Um, imagery uh, from the street, uh, just showing the current state of the site or somewhat similar. Um, as for correspondence, uh, planning has no objections. However, um, this would be subject to the conditions uh, that conformity with section 9.6.2.3 of the town of Grimsby official plan is maintained and the condition that the use of the property be for agricultural operations. Public Works has no comments, Fire has no comments. Uh, the region notes that pro the proposed change does not bring the site into more conformity with the regional or provincial policies. However, it doesn't offend these policies either, as the property has been used for over 60 years for non-agricultural, commercial, and industrial uses. Uh, there are some unique characteristics on this site that they note. Uh, this also um, includes that the proposed uses are compatible with an agricultural customer base. No agricultural land is being taken out of production and the site does not appear to have viable agricultural potential. Uh, from the NPCA, they have no objections, but they just wanna note that the rear of the property contains NPCA regulated lands. And if development or site alteration is proposed, a works permit and appropriate studies would be necessary. Heritage has no comments, CN, no comments, Grimsby Power, uh, no comments. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. And is the applicant or their representative here? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, my name is Colin Brown. I'm with McNally Brown Group, and I am representing uh, the uh, Wolverton Road Holdings along with uh, our planner, uh, Andrea Miller. And um, we are here to answer any questions. Uh, I think Grimsby uh, staff have summarized the uh, application uh, uh, very well. Um, you know, for us, the uh, the, the, the uh, property has been used for uh, various non-agricultural uses for, for over 60 years and um, um, it's been sitting vacant for some time and the, the owner, Mr. McKeel, is, uh, is, is investing back into the property and, and trying to bring it back to life and um, hopefully get some, uh, some good local jobs for, for this facility. Uh, we have two uh, potential tenants that um, um, are, are in the, waiting for the decision. And um, yeah, we're hoping uh, we get a positive uh, decision this evening. So we're here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions from the committee members? First of all, Herb. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe this property was before the committee once before, not too long ago regarding uh, uh, marijuana production uh, facility. Is this uh, going to, uh, this new development uh, will not include any uh, marijuana production or, or facility related to marijuana? Uh, no, not. No? No. Thank you. Any other questions, Herb? No? Uh, I'm not sure if it was Adam next. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to Mr. Brown. Um, I'm just wondering, under the Greenbelt plan, is the um, proposed, I guess, potential uses classified as agriculture or non-agricultural? 
I'll pass that one on to uh, Andrea. Andrea? We just get, get your name off. and yeah. Yeah, so um, my name is Andrea Miller. I'm a registered professional planner, and I prepared the planning justification report in support of the application. And I'm here with um, with Colin Brown this evening uh, to answer your questions. So through you, Mr. Chair, uh, to the committee member, uh, as outlined in both uh, my report and the region's report, the Greenbelt policies are not offended by this. Um, in fact, um, the um, uh, airflow management humidity uh, refrigeration um, um, facility would be consistent with agriculturally related uses as noted in the Greenbelt plan. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Is that, does that answer you, Anna? Thank you. Uh, Danielle? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so my question is, is uh, overall, I'm supportive of this. I would love to see this, this property occupied finally. Um, I, I am kind of on, on planning staff's recommendation as well too, um, you know, supportive of this on the caveat that the use is of the property is related to agricultural operations. So I think I need to get a better understanding of the business um, and, and its operations and how it's directly related to, to an agricultural operation to be able to be fully supportive of this. So can I get a little bit more information, please, about the, about the business and its operations and how airflow handling equipment um, is, is related to agricultural operations? I, I, maybe I'm just a little bit naive. I have a bit of an HVAC background, but not maybe in agricultural farming relations. So that would be thank appreciated, please. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Danielle. Uh, Colin, did you wish to address that or? Uh, yes, I can, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, the two potential tenants are, are, are actually deeply in the uh, agricultural uh, uh, markets. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to disclose the percentage of their market or anything in the agricultural area uh, things because they have signed off on that. But um, they, uh, for example, their refrigeration uh, um, uh, potential tenant, they they do. Um, the wineries and and flower and and, and greenhouses and um, and different types of agricultural related uh, markets as, as as that and and as well as the pallet industry the pallet uh, tenant as as well does um, probably even a, a pretty similar percentage of agricultural business as the, as the refrigeration business where they um, they they deliver locally uh, uh, supplying, uh, greenhouses and, and, and different agricultural related, um, um, vegetables and, and things like that on, on pallets. So they deliver to the, for, for the Niagara and, uh, Halton region, uh, markets. So it's quite substantial actually for both of them, the agricultural side of things. I, I apologize. I was not asking for a disclosure of ownership. I should have clarified that. that <laughs> I, just make, what I, was looking for. I didn't want to get um, anybody in trouble. <laughs> no, uh, what you described, that's exactly what I was looking for. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, Dylan? I just had a, a um, perhaps re related, but not, you know, related to the, to the application. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I would, you know, I am supportive of the, of the application. I just wondered about with there now being a business there, and it sounds like there'll be various servicing to various, you know, um, locations throughout the region, I would imagine. So trans, would there be, um, or maybe this is more to Walter, um, you know, transportation in and around in the use of sort of Wolverton with, I don't know if it's large trucks or that sort of thing. I, is any of that our concern or would that be part of i'm probably i'm grasping at straws here because i'm not yeah. exactly sure what i'm talking about but yeah. i wouldn't want the approval of this to then cause major problems for the town or even these organizations later on and, and wolverton is a certainly an important road but it's it's kind of steep and kind of windy so yeah it's it's my understanding that wolverton road isn't open to vehicles over a certain weight category. So large trucks would not be able to use Wolverton. They would have to use the other the other routes that are uh, designated for large vehicles. Is that, does that help, uh, Dylan? Thank you. Anyone else? No? There's no delegations. Then do I have a motion on this? Dylan, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to refer to the resolution that was provided. Let it be resolved that submission A30-22 
um, uh, by Wilberton Road Holdings Limited for 194 Wilberton Road be permitted to uh, to permit a variance of section 6.1.1 of the Grimsby Zoning Bylaw 14-45 to provide relief from the list of permitted uses in the SC zone as shown in table six. Um, and it's specifically uh, number one regarding pallet handling. <coughs> Sorry, pallet handling facility or a refrigeration humidity and airflow management facility um, as permitted on the property in the SC zone. Um, the reasons for the decision are that it is, um, the variance is minor in nature. Uh, it is appropriate and it does meet the intent of the zoning bylaw and official plans and um, and with the two conditions that are outlined in the resolution. Thank you. A seconder? Herb? Uh, any further discussion on this motion? Danielle, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, you Mr. Further. Chair. Um, I just wanted to note through regional comments, um, they had requested a condition of consent um, however, this is a, vi a minor variance. <laughs> so I just wanted cl to clarify, um, it talks about, I'm just gonna, sorry, scroll back down because I just wanted to make sure. Um, appendix number one, condition of, re condition of consent that if retaining the legal non-conforming septic on site, there is no increase to the sewage flows and the applicant repairs the electrical box on the pump chamber. And if proposing a new septic system, the applicant applies to the region for a new class four sewage system. So since we don't generally have regional staff in attendance, uh, well, Walter, can I ask I see Walter has his hand up. How do we up, address so. this since it's not a consent and it, can we apply this to the variance? Is this something that would get looked at through occupancy permits? Walter? Yeah, I, I say that's just a, a typo. So oh, that, is that a date? Okay. That, yeah, they clearly, they clearly, we've discussed it with them. They clearly know what the application is. And uh, it's definitely not, it's def, that's not what their intent is. It, it's, you know, it's not a severance or a consent. Right. Thank you. I was confused. So then. Okay. Moving Thank on. you. I and apologize. So the motion is, we have a mover and a seconder. No further questions or comments regarding the motion. All those in favor say aye or raise your hand. That's easier. Opposed, if any, was carried. So it was approved. There is a 20 day appeal period before it becomes final and binding. Thank you for Thank attending. You have, a, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. And then our last application this evening is A26, I guess they're kind of related. A2622, 292 Main Street West. Um, and then the land consent, uh, A B03 and B04 for the same address. Michaela, I'll open it up to you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I think Adam has Adam, a... did you have a question? Oh, sorry, Adam. Yeah, thanks. Um, sorry, Adam. Wondering if, uh, about the order of, uh, I guess, operations, if it would be um, better to hear the, the consent first and then the minor variance, because if the consent say didn't pass and we're talking about lots that may never exist don't exist right. yep uh yeah we were going to do a overview of all of the applications just um uh to make sure we're all on the same page and then i agree that we should uh make decisions on the consent and then the minor variance okay. does that help uh, adam yeah thanks I'll go in the other room. Did you want to listen? There's a few people that have to go on mute, I believe. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, so we're going to look at applications A2622, B0322, and B0422. Uh, these are all related to 292 Main Street West. Uh, so a brief overview of uh, the proposal is it's an application to sever the existing lot into three total lots. Um, specifically, application B0322 is to sever the front lot. B0422 is to sever the rear lot. 
The middle lot is to be retained. There are easements proposed for servicing and access and application. Um, I muted him. Uh, an application A2622 is to bring the resultant lots into compliance with zoning bylaw 1445. Uh, so the uh, subject site is highlighted in yellow on the aerial photography below. Uh, that just just comparing it with the um, neighborhood context. Uh, this is the uh, current conditions of the lot. Uh, this was taken in June 2022. So to go over the application, um, these, this uh, drawing shows the three lots. So they would be in flag shape configuration. Uh, and just for consistency through the presentation, uh, I'm gonna refer to lot one as the one that's closest to Main Street. Lot two is the one that's in the center, um, which is being retained by the applicants. And lot three is the one uh, furthest back from Main Street. So the previous slide showed the consent, and then this shows the easements as well. So red represents easements for servicing that are proposed, and green represents easements for access that are proposed. So for lot one, uh, the easements in favor of lot one are um, the red for servicing. Um, and you'll notice it does cross over the um, green at, um, easement for access. So in favor of lot two, uh, there's the red servicing as well as the green access easement. And for lot three, uh, an access easements would be required. And to note the access easements are mostly because the driveway is located on the property of lot two. Uh, so access to lot one and lot three uh, technically is over top of lot two. Um, so for B03, uh, this slide just shows Part one, which is the lands to be severed. And then B04 in red shows the lands to be severed. Um, and then to go over the minor variances. So we're just looking at lot one right now and the variances that uh, apply to that. So for lot one, they, would requ they are requesting a lot coverage of 24%, whereas 15% is what's permitted. And they would be permitted or requesting per to permit a rear yard setback of 7.5 meters, whereas 25% of the lot depth, which is 12.09 meters, is required. So those are the variances they've applied for that apply to lot one, so the one closest to Main Street. And then for the variances that are applied for that relate to lot two, so the center lot that is to be retained is to permit a lot frontage of four meters, whereas 18 meters is what's required. Um, and this is a result of it being uh, what we call a flag lot. Um, there's a request to permit a rear yard setback of 8.7 meters, whereas 25% of the lot depth being 27.82 meters um, is required. And again, the required lot depth is fairly large because of the flag lot configuration um, as the 25% is from basically the, the road all the way back to uh, the rear proposed lot line. Um, they're also requesting uh, to permit an accessory building to be located closer to the street than the front wall of the dwelling. And 
the variances related to lot three, so the one furthest from Main Street, um, they're requesting to permit a lot frontage of four meters, whereas 18 meters is required to permit a rear yard setback of 32.5 meters, whereas 25% of the lot depth, uh, which is 41.08. Again, this number comes from being a flag lot. So it's basically measured from Main Street all the way to the existing rear lot line. Uh, to permit a minimum setback from the principal structure of 1.1 meters, whereas 1.5 meters is required. Um, as you can see, there is a very small shed um, in front of the larger building labeled shed on the plan. And to permit an accessory building to be located closer to the street than the front wall um, of the dwelling. Um, so I'll go through the correspondence. Um, a lot of it applies to all three applications. Um, so I guess how we want to do it is maybe I'll start with the first consent um, and then I'll move to the second consent and then the minor variance um, and anything that is the same, I'll indicate that. And then any kind of different comments, I will go through uh, individually. Um, so for the first consent, uh, and that's the one closest to Main Street. Uh, planning staff do not support the application as proposed to create a new residential lot in the front yard of the ex of an existing heritage resource, as there would be significant negative impact on its cultural heritage value. From heritage, uh, they note uh, heritage staff in the Heritage Grimsby Advisory Committee are not supportive of the front yard severance due to the impact on the contextual significance of the subject site. Heritage staff and Heritage Grimsby Advisory Committee recommend that the property be designated under Part 4 of the Ontario Heritage Act for the cultural heritage significance. Uh, public Works uh, noted four conditions requested, um, or uh, noted four conditions of approval. Uh, in summary, it would be the submission of an overall grading plan prepared by a land surveyor or engineer for lots one, two, and three, that the drainage be self-contained and discharged to an adequate outlet, uh, the submission of an overall stormwater management report to the town of Grimsby, to submit a servicing plan accurately showing the existing and proposed servicing of water and sanitary to the town, um, and all of these would need to be to the satisfaction of the Director of Public Works. Um, another condition is that all lots to be are to be individually serviced and contained within their respective property, and that the owner enter into a development agreement with the town. Uh, from the fire department, they had no comments or objections. Uh, from the region, they had no objections subject to conditions, uh, which in summary are that part 15, which is that really small part. Um, that kind of sticks out closest to Main Street be dedicated to the region for road widening. That the stage one and two archaeological reports are submitted to the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries, and that an acknowledgement letter is received. Uh, that they provide a written undertaking to the region that a clause be inserted into all offers and agreements of purchase and sale or lease for parts one and 10 to 15, um, noting that waste is to be brought curbside for regional waste collection. Uh, from the Conservation Authority, no objections. From Grimsby Power, um, they note the property owner is to provide easements on the west side of the lands in favor of Grimsby Power Incorporated in order to obtain individual utility owned electrical services for each proposed dwelling, and that all costs are to be borne by the developer. Uh, and we received four letters from neighbors. From 30 Hickory, they had concerns regarding lot grading and drainage, fire access, and snow clearing. 
from 28 Hickory, they outlined concerns regarding lot sizes, traffic, emergency access, waste removal, and impact on heritage. From 38 Hickory, they outlined concerns regarding the impact on heritage, reduced lot size, um, and the flag lot configuration. And a letter from the neighbor at 290 Main Street West, um, concerns regarding home value, safety, quality of life, privacy, noise, lighting, impact on heritage, and impacts on the streetscape. So those are all of the um, comments received. Um, so I'll, that was for consent number one. So I'll go into consent number two, um, and I'll indicate any uh, repeated comments, and I'll read out any comments received that only apply to the rear lot consent. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, um, and anyone has a better way to suggest, I'm open to that too. Kevin thinks says it works, so I'll go ahead. So for the rear lot, so this is the lot three consent at the back. Uh, planning is in support of this application as propo proposed, provided that the public works requirements are met. Uh, from our heritage staff, the heritage staff in Grimsby, Grimsby Heritage Advisory Committee are supportive of the rear yard severance if properly designated under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act, which has been included as a condition of approval. From Public Works, they have the same comments as for the front se uh, front severance. Uh, fire, again, no comments. Niagara Region, they have the same comments, uh, conditions as uh, the Lot 1 severance. Uh, Conservation Authority has no objections, uh, CN Rail, no comments, and Grimsby Power has the same comments as previously noted. Um, so that is for the Lot 3 severance. Um, and for the minor variances, I'll go through those. So from planning, uh, planning does not support the minor variances for Lot 1 or the minimum front lot frontage for Lot 2. And this is just because they don't support the um, severance of lot one. So the one closest to Main Street. Planning staff have no objections to the remaining minor variances proposed by the applicant, subject to the recommended condition that the accessory building variance for proposed lot three only apply to the existing accessory building. From Heritage, uh, they're not supportive of the variances related to lot one. Um, therefore are not supportive of the front yard or frontage variances requested for lot two. They are supportive of the variances for lot three if the property is, is designated under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act. Uh, they also have a condition that the accessory building variance for proposed lot three only apply to the existing accessory building. From Public Works that on the minor variances, they have no comments. Fire has no comments. Um, the region are the same that were outlined for the consent applications. Uh, CN Rail, no comments. And Grimsby Power has the same comments as above. Um, so that's all the correspondence for the applications. Um, I believe the agent also has um, a brief presentation to go through as well. Thank you, Michaela. I will hand it over now to the owner or their representative. I believe I saw Jared on the screen somewhere. Jared, there you are. Yeah, I apologize. Hi. The alarm no problem. The building just started going off. So oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's causing too much disruption in the background. Not too bad. Go ahead. Do you have a presentation? Oh, I wouldn't call it brief by any stretch of the imagination. I didn't say brief. I just said, do you have a presentation? <laughs> I thought that Ray called it brief. But yes, Mr. Chair, I do have a, a presentation. Go is, ahead. Is there, a, is there a time limit that I have to keep? Uh, no. Other than it's, it's more. Really late. No, I yeah. don't think for this one. You got three of them. So how about 15 yeah. minutes? But keep it shorter than that if you can. <laughs> I'll do my best. I, I know Ms. Bray covered a lot of. Uh, the particular details. So,
Michaela, you said uh, that I could or could not share. Right. Uh, usually uh, we don't permit third party screen sharing, but it's okay. You can share. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that. Find my presentation. Okay, is that on the screen? Great, I promise it's not the full slide deck. I'm gonna skip some, so. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Jared Marcus. I'm here from IBI Group. I am the agent for the owners of the property, uh, Lisa and Rudy Irish, who own 292 Main Street West. So I'd like to speak to all three applications at the same time, uh, just to, make sure it's streamlined from my perspective. Uh, before I jump into the first slide, I do just want to note that there have been some concerns raised in written correspondence about whether applications are premature or whether there's uh, a, a sufficient information. And as the committee is likely aware, we go through a pretty extensive process to get where we're at. We do engineering design drawings, which uh, I think there are new public comments, public works comments on that I haven't seen. Uh, we did a archaeological assessment, cultural heritage assessment, planning, uh, planning justification brief, uh, and tree protection plan. So we've done a lot of background work before we even got to where we are today. Uh, so having said that, I'll uh, dive into my comments. So this first, uh, this first slide looks similar to what Ms. Bray presented. It's just an overall view of the context of the subject lands in the neighborhood. You can see the subject lands in right kind of center of the screen. And surrounding the west, north, and northeast, you can see that there are newish uh, subdivisions uh, that were built around the year 2000 that uh, would have been built or built on what would have been uh, the former fruit uh, uh, farm there. And then just to the southeast here, you can see 290 Main Street, which um, is on the inventory, but it's a newer dwelling. And it, the development of that property essentially covers the entirety of the development. Further down Main Street here, you have typical low density development that's typical of the historic context of Main Street on both the north and south, albeit different uh, historic context, contextual identities on both sides of the street. Uh, next slide shows the property context from the uh, internal of the site if you were looking out, so images uh, for first, all the next slides, you're going to have a key key index on the left hand side and images. So slides number one and four here show what the site looks like if you look to the east abutting the lower density and 290. Um, slides three and five here show what the context is looking to the west. So the newer subdivisions in context to the property, and this would be similar to the east side of the property as well. And then lastly, Number uh, two is a view from the middle of the property looking north towards the dwelling. Uh, the next number of slides will just kind of roll through the context, the streetscape context. All these images are taken from street view. So the first image here you can see is the subject lands. It's a fairly deep lot, but there is visually no context from the street. You can't see into the property. There's very minimal sight lines into the property. You see the mature vegetation, you see front lawn. Uh, stretching back into the property. Looking, moving east to uh, from 290 to 286, you see some of these properties that are on the inventory but not designated, and some that are not on the inventory, but the context is deeper front lawns. Uh, in the older dwellings, there's a lack of mature vegetation or landscaping, but on the newer dwellings, uh, there's enhanced landscaping, which does not really match that historic context. Next slide shows from 282 to 274 Main Street. So again, on the first slide on the top right, you see the older context dwellings with the large lot and sparse vegetation. Um, moving east, you have newer dwellings, middle, middle of the century with a lot of landscape and not, not really matching that context. And then new development next to Heritage Lane that is very modern in style and very close to the street, which again, really doesn't match that context. And last slide in that series, you have uh, 268 to 262 
Maine. Those are all on the inventory or designated. Uh, 268 really seems to be an outlier on that street as it's close and doesn't really match that historic context that you would have seen on 262 and 268, which is a deeper lot with sparse uh, vegetation and large setbacks. Um, street view is one thing we weren't comfortable with relying on street view. So I attended the site to get a more of a human context uh, to see what the what we're looking at on site. And so these these images will all focus on what's present, what you see when you're in person on the sidewalk in front of the property. So the first three images here you can see are looking at the left hand side of the property. Uh, this would be at about my height, so six feet from the sidewalk as opposed to a street view car zipping by. So this is what you're human context is going to be from the street. Again, you can see there's a large manicured lawn in front, but there's huge mature vegetation that virtually obstructs all views of the existing dwelling and most views into the site. Uh, so there's very minimal uh, visual context of the existing dwelling. You can see the house at 280, 294 is set quite close to the street, excuse me, street comparatively. Uh, there's the wrought iron railing, fence and retaining wall. As you move to your east, uh, you're on the bottom screen, you see that large spruce tree and some other tree uh, enhanced vegetation along the streetscape. It really obstru obstructs any views into the property. Uh, you move a little further west again, you get to the driveway. There are very minor views. Uh, really, your only context to the house is the shed at the side of the property, which is being proposed to move. be moved. And then when you get to the property line, again, it's mature vegetation and no no visual context to the house. This, of course, being 290 Main Street. Um, the next two slides show views if you walk past to the west and what you're going to see looking at the property is 294 uh, Main Street, which blocks any views into the property. And again, the mature vegetation and some uh, retaining wall and wrought iron railing. So really no visual context from a human uh, scale as well into this property. Next slide just shows the heritage context of what's around it, but I'm not going to dwell on that. Next couple slides, again, just build off that heritage context of the street. So you can see a number, all the numbers here, that represents the approximate widths of the existing lots in the area. You have the newer subdivision here with smaller lots. Then you have the subject lands, which is 26 meters. And you have a variety of lot widths, which are fairly consistent between 21 to 30, 34, 36 meters. Uh, the blue signifying lot, uh, either heritage inventory or designated properties. The red just being the uh, regular lots. Uh, you can see here the outliers, five, five meter frontages on the other flag lots on the lots. That context kind of shows that it's already been done on the street and fits in. Um, Next slide shows, uh, again, more of the heritage, more of the streetscape context. These white numbers across the street will signify the approximate setbacks of the existing dwellings, uh, and the red being what we're proposing in this application. Um, so the lots to the west, of course, a little bit closer, they're the modern dwellings. Then you move to the immediate east at 290, and you'll see that 28 meters is really the deepest uh, setback here, and a seam follow a similar plane across the street down to 276. So uh, if you're west of those flag lots, they're all kind of that uh, similar setback of 19 to 28 meters. As you move east again, you have reduced setbacks. So it's really a fragmented streetscape along this section of Main Street. But once you get past Heritage Lane with the designated dwelling and the new structures, your setbacks increase again to what would have been that heritage context or the historical streetscape context on Main Street. And that's, um, now I've got light problems too. Um, that would, that's really what we base this application on is trying to match that historical context. Next slide kind of shows what Ms. Gray showed, so we won't dwell on it too much. The three lots, two flag lots at the rear and uh, the one new lot at the front. Uh, Ms. Gray commented on the overall depth and how that affected the uh, rear yard setbacks, the widths of the two flag lots are four meters, but the overall widths of the properties are uh, 21 and 26 meters. So uh, we don't feel that this new lot creation is going to create uh, a situation that is not consistent with the streetscape. Next couple slides will show in a little more detail uh, 
what's being proposed on each lot. So starting from the north, we have lot three on this slide. Uh, and so this shows that the existing dwelling is proposed to remain in situ. As Ms. Bray noted, there is a small shed in front of that dwelling, which triggers two variances. Uh, we have the variance for lot frontage, and then we have the variance for rear yard, which in our opinion is really a product of a technicality of the, the depth of the lot versus what's actually out there on the site. So you have, you still have a quite expansive lot. It's 20 meters wide by 52 meters deep. And you have significant setbacks. So none of the creation of this lot and the variances will have no new impact on the existing neighbors to the south, north, or uh, sorry, excuse me, the west, north, or east. Uh, next lot is what we proposed as lot two. Again, you'll see that the existing dwelling proposed to remain in situ. Uh, but you'll note the small shed here on the east side is proposed to move over here to the west side. Again, that triggers a variance for location relative to uh, being in front of the building. Um, I know that's the staff comments suggest this is an inappropriate variance uh, due to visual impact. In our opinion, as we've shown in the first slides, there is uh, next to zero visibility of this dwelling from the street. So it, it baffles how you could have a visual impact on something that can't be seen. So in our opinion, that variance doesn't create a visual impact and could be determined to be minor in nature. Again, you're dealing with a four meter frontage, which is the flag lot, but the actual lot width is 21.6 by approximately 64. So it's again, it's a quite expansive lot with a front yard, we'll call it front yard area here between the two lots that we're proposing, which would be approximately, uh, uh, would be about approximately 50 meters, I believe. And the last image, uh, which we think is the most important to the conversation is what's being proposed on lot one. Uh, you'll see that we're proposing a lot width of approximately 18 meters, uh, but your overall context from the street wouldn't change in any way. It would still be a 26 meter wide, wide lot. As Ms. Bray noted, we are proposing all access to come off the private driveway that's already there. Um, when we reviewed this, as I noted earlier, we, we felt that the context to the street was important and that the enhanced setback was important to ensuring that consistent setback. So you'll see we proposed a 22 meter setback to the envelope. Uh, that's not reflected in the variance because it isn't a variance. Um, but if, you know, if that's an important feature, the committee is within their powers to add that uh, variance. The overall lot on building envelope you'll note here has a two-story garage at the rear, and that uh, that's to ensure that no new changes to the streetscape are introduced. So your large mature vegetation at the street is maintained. Your wrought iron fence with pillars is maintained. The driveway interface is maintained. For all intents and purposes, the existing context of the street is still maintained through this application. Uh, there is some tree removal. The one large maple that I uh, that might I might have noted is to be removed to place the dwelling. Um, but overall, we think that the setbacks and the and the size of the lot are in character with the street. Um, the variances would be as noted earlier: the seven and a half meter setback here at the rear. Uh, this lot line was established by the owners because they wanted to ensure that there was still a significant separation between the two proposed dwellings. So the desire to balance all these things led us to keep that dwelling back from the street, uh, but set, set that uh, rear yard at a typical depth. The lot coverage variance we're seeking is 24%, where 15 is permitted, and that's based on this envelope. Uh, you'll note that the envelope is only 2,000 square meters, so that is a typical modern building envelope, uh, not, you won't see the dimension here, but the overall uh, width of that envelope would be in the about 12.8 meters. And if you look across the street, all those building widths are gonna be in a range of 11 to 18 meters. So 12.8 meters fits right in that, uh, right in that sweet spot. And we think those variances are, are minor and don't create an, a net and adverse impact on the adjacent dwellings. Um, what wasn't part of the application that made it before the committee was a, a sample of uh, what a building footprint or a building massing might look on the street. Um, given the, the concerns that were raised about uh, context to the street, we thought it was necessary to try to 
provide some visual here. Here you'll see this is again the street view look uh, from right from the property of 294 to the west, 290 to the east. Uh, it's hard to get a true sense because 294 is close to the street, 290 is back. So it's a it's not 100% accurate, but we think it's a good representation. Uh, you'll see here where my cursor is. This is the maple tree that's proposed to be removed. And that's where this dwelling would be sitting, right where that maple tree is. So we've tried to come up with a schematic that would look like the existing buildings to the east in, in design as well as height and, and massing and show that you know, you're still representing that uh, overall landscaped yard from Main Street, the, the large expansive front setback. That's all maintained. The, the issue is really, is there a, what is the mitigation to the view or the impact of the view to the back? And as we've noted, we, there really isn't any views to the back. So the impact of, uh, of adding a dwelling won't cause any additional changes to that existing heritage structure. Um, and that's that's the extent of the visual evidence I have for you. I just want to finish with a few summary conclusions uh, that we thought were important. And the first one being that in the planning world, we strive for balance. As most know, we have Planning Act, Provincial Policy Statement, Growth Plan, Regional Official Plan, Town Official Plan, et cetera. We have all these higher level policies that guide development. And we're always trying to balance those policies. The, plan, the higher order policies, we'll talk to intensification, intensification, but at the same time, we have to respect heritage. And we feel that this application, it meets that sweet spot of balance between intensification, growing the town, tax base, adding new dwelling units, as well as respecting heritage. We're keeping the units in situ. There's no change to the visual, there's minimal change to the visual context from the street. Um, as you see in the second point, again, that's the same comment. The, the buildings remain in situ. The new dwelling can be designed to be compatible. The lot widths, in our opinion, is compatible. The streetscape character, in our professional opinion, in our professional opinion, uh, the minor variance application meets all four tests and should be approved. Uh, similarly, the consent doesn't have four tests of the Planning Act, but there are a variety of policies in the official plan. We've reviewed those. We're confident that we meet all those. So in our opinion, the consent is also uh, complies with the official plan and be and should be approved. Um, and so the last image I wanna leave you with is taken from the staff report that's before you today. The, the general basis for the entire staff opinion tonight comes down to these two side-by-side -side images. Uh, staff are looking at this image here on your left, and there was a visual context uh, from 20,000 feet and, and from the street 20 years ago. And the, the fact of the matter is, I'm in the dark. Uh, the fact of the matter is, damn it. Sorry, Mr. Chair. The fact of the matter is that the context you see on the right hand side of the screen doesn't have doesn't tie into this anymore. Uh, the development's been allowed on all four three sides. It's completely removed any of that historic context. So, in our respectfully, we don't agree with staff's opinion in this case. We think that you know uh, trying to apply this historical context to what uh, exists today is just not the appropriate way to go about this. And we think we've met the balance of uh, planning matters. Uh, and that's my submission for you today, Mr. Chair. So. If there are any questions from the committee, uh, I'd be happy to stick around and answer those. Thanks, Jared. Um, before we open up to the committee for questions, uh, Bianca, I believe, wants to do a brief presentation or make some comments. Bianca, she's, she's the heritage planner for the town of Grimsby. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, for you, the chair, if I could just... Um... I guess I can speak to the image on the screen since Jared has it up. Um, so as Jared had mentioned, there has been significant development over the last 20 years, uh, 20 plus years. Um, and the resource was visible from Roberts Road, Livingston Avenue and Main Street West. And uh, based on the uh, severance of the site, um, Obviously, the heritage was taken into consideration, allowing somewhat of a view to be preserved um, from Main Street West. And I also have some historic photographs from the 1930s that shows that this was the original entrance to the farm as well. Um, so just to speak to this photo while it's on the screen, but maybe I can take over and 
Um, Michaela, if you could give me some permissions, if I can share my screen. Um, I'm pretty sure you're allowed to. Um, Is it not letting you? No, it's not letting me. Okay. You might have to do co-host. It's like normal Zoom. The other person has to stop first before you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, Jared has his own. Um, you know, sorry. So I'm just going to use the screen here. So at first, they wanted to show um, some photos when the foliage isn't in full um, um, bloom here. Um, and you can see that there is still a visibility to the resource from the back. Um, but I also wanted to mention that even when it is in full uh, foliage and as you're traveling down Main Street, um, there's kind of like a user experience as you're coming down because you see this deep lot and there's an instinct to search for that heritage resource. So while I think it is a bit of a challenge to see it at first when you're coming down, there's definitely that search um, for the resource in behind. Um, also from a heritage perspective, this very deep um, lot provides um, a very clear uh, contrast between the development on either side and the historic farm parcel. And that deep um, lot is a character defining element uh, to the site. Um, I also wanted to mention that the uh, resource did meet the merit for designation and met several of the criteria um as was echoed within the heritage impact assessment um the heritage impact assessment also uh found there to be those um impacts to the heritage building um and so i also wanted to show this photograph from the 1930s it shows the entrance to the farm the farm it shows the where the heritage resource was and also the uh auxiliary or accessory buildings to the rear um, as they are today in situ um, and then I also wanted to mention that, um, sorry, Ms. Barrett, we had a few notes here. The heritage impact assessment didn't uh, speak to the um, accessory building in the uh, being proposed to be moved and that being placed in front of the heritage building. So that element wasn't included in the heritage impact assessment. Um, and then there was a few options provided in the heritage impact assessment and uh, a mention of the impacts to the resource or the heritage significance of the site uh, had to be uh, mitigated. And um, removing all the visual accessibility to this resource cannot be mitigated by putting um, a building in front of it. So we found there to be no mitigation to that impact. And so heritage staff, along with the heritage advisory uh, committee also, uh, sorry, did not support that. Um, they also um, felt that the rear yard severance uh, had the potential to put uh, some vulnerability on those accessory buildings. And because of that, uh, it is recommended that the site be designated under part for the Heritage Act. Uh, these outbuildings help to visually illustrate the historic use of the site as a farm um, and further strengthen the merit for designation. So those are some of my initial comments, but I'm happy to answer any comments from or questions from the committee. Thank you, Bianca. Um, I believe that's it. So we're going to first open it up to uh, members of the committee before we open it up to members of the public. I see we have a few delegations here. So members of the committee, do you have any questions or comments for the applicant or staff? Danielle? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to the applicant um, or agent, I'm not too sure, or the owner, even if he's present or if they're present, um, there is through multiple pieces of written correspondence, there was noted that the shed that is existing between the two dwellings on site is currently being occupied as a third unit on the property. Can anybody verify if this is actually occurring? Um, and if the town's aware of this, what the status of that is? Maybe Walter can answer that or Jared. Do you mean the back shed? I'm not aware. Uh, there, are, there are two larger structures on the building, which is the main house at the front and uh, what was formerly a barn. Uh, and then there's a smaller shed in between those two main buildings. That's what you're referring to? 
Y yes, okay. Walter. No. Yeah, there's multiple pieces of correspondence from neighbors stating that this is also being occupied as a unit. Maybe the owner or Jared can speak to that. I, I know there's a, I, I believe the owner said their in-laws lived in the, or their mother-in-law lived in the former fruit barn, which is uh, mm -hmm. proposed to be on lot three, but I wasn't I'm aware. I'm not questioning the status of the existing two dwellings as noted okay. in the staff report. I'm questioning that shed. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to let Jared visit, answer it's, that. It's extremely small and I don't think it would meet any requirements right. for a dwelling, but I have concerns if neighbors are experiencing it being occupied as one right three, three you, mr chair yeah yep. three mr chair the that that shed is most definitely not occupied i was uh at the site this weekend and that's just a shed thank you for that clarification danielle did you have any more questions not at this time that's the only clarification Pardon me, clarification I'll be seeking at this time, Mr. Chair. I might have more further comments later on. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, Herb? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, along that same lines, uh, I, when I was there, I noticed uh, three mailboxes uh, with three different names on them. So is there the back concrete block barn occupied by one tenant or property owner or proposed property owner and then there's the main house that's occupied where is the third uh occupant uh residing jared did you wish to answer that or have the owner in sure, yeah, i'm on here it's rudy here oh. Hi, uh, Herbert, thanks for your question. Uh, just in reference to the, the third mailbox, we do have uh, a legal suite um, that is in the basement of our the main dwelling, and that should be on record with the town as well. We went through the full application process and all the applicable permits. That would be the third mailbox. Thank you. That was Rudy. I didn't catch your first. Yes, correct. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks. Uh, Adam? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess it's just a question to planning. The flag lots at 278, I think it's 280 Main Street West. Any idea when those were created? Walter? Sorry, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just checking uh, to see exactly where they are. 270 and 278, you said? Uh, 278 and 280, I believe. 78280. Okay, I see. Yes. Uh, the the portion of the lots fronting onto Main Street were created uh, uh, well before I started working here, <laughs> which is a really, really long time ago. Uh, but the uh, they they originally formed parts of uh, farm lots that extended all the way to Livingston Avenue, so uh, which were severed and uh, and then subsequently subdivided and um, assembled and subsequently subdivided into the the, the subdivision and behind. Uh, I think it's Will uh, Hemlock Way. Okay, thanks. So that would have been that's, well. That's well. That's well more probably more than 50, 60 years ago, maybe. Okay, before. so that would have been well before the existing lot frontages were set, correct? Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I thought I saw another hand. Any other questions from the committee? Walter, I just had a clarification question, or maybe it was, it was a bit of an interest question. What was the, the story behind, I think it's 290 Main Street East. Was that not a recreation of a historical building that was built on that site, it's immediately to the east of the subject property. Sorry, you're on mute. Thank you. Just noticed. Um, yes, that was uh, uh, the original heritage building was situated uh, well into the and in, in close into the middle of the subdivision uh, development. Um, the uh, the um, developer at the time um, offered to sort of recreate uh, in a new house what the original building 
sort of looked like. So it was, um, although it doesn't exactly replicate the house, it it approximates it. Uh, obviously, higher ceilings and things like that. Modern amenities uh, were also incorporated into the new design. But uh, that that was basically the rationale behind uh, that particular building. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the committee or from the committee before I open it up to delegations? No, I see none. Okay, let's just start with the screen. I'm going to start with who's first on my list here? Marvin Ingbringston, or is that uh, staff? That's town staff. That's town staff. Okay, uh, the owner Grimsby Bernhard Volz. Bernhard, can we just get your uh, name and address for the record, if you'd like to say a few words or ask sure. questions? Um, 60 Catalpa, uh, 16 Catalpa Court um, in Grimsby. Uh, I, I don't have any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Andrea? El Juga? Andrea? No? Sorry, just oh, working with my go. mic here. All right, uh, no, no I don't have any questions at this time. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Uh, Nino and Sandra Raffanelli. Hi, good evening. Uh, and thanks Hi. for the opportunity for uh, allowing us here to listen to the meeting. Uh, we have no further questions at this point, but uh, we'll hang tight and see what continues and how this progresses. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bob Bolzevic. Yep, I'm Bob Soljevac. I'm in 36 Hickory Crescent. We back on to lot three. Um, I have no questions at this point, but I assume that comments and opinions are further down. Yeah, okay. thank you. Uh, Annie, Annie G, it says. Hi, I'm Annie Gajmarek, 12 Catalpa Court. No questions at this time, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Howarth B. Howarth B. Pardon? Oh, Bob and Elizabeth. All I see is the name on the screen. Bob and Elizabeth Howarth. Going once. All right. Oh, yeah. there they are. Yeah. Sorry. No yeah. problem. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I just got a, a quick question. Sorry. Can we just get your address for the record? Yeah. Thir Thirty-eight Hickory. Thirty-eight Hickory. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Just the stuff with, I just want to get clarification. When you say the lot uh, number three sits in situ, what does that mean? I will let uh, Walter answer that, basically. Okay. Um, in situ means that uh, the existing buildings will remain where they are. Okay. So, so a new lot would be created having frontage to main on its own, but the buildings would not be moved. So therefore the variances that are related to um, the creation of that lot reflect the existing, I'm gonna call it the fruit barn, right? Yep. And the other mm -hmm. small shed. So they would not be moved. Okay, would there any, what happens if there's a land behind that that someone wants to develop? Is that a separate application? Walter? Um, when, when you say develop, uh, what? Well, so let me put an application in. Yes. The, the question I have for you is, do you mean sever their lot or? Sever their lot and put a, a, a another building on there. Yes, that would require a new application and another public meeting. Okay. Yeah. And so, right, yes, yeah, no, the zoning has already been set. In. Okay. Anything else? Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kristen Wrenches, Wrenches. I'm at 28 Hickory Crescent, and I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. Bob, could I just get you to go back on mute? Howard? Thanks. And then I have Josh's iPhone 3. Yeah. Uh, 40 Hickory Crescent. Uh, 40? No questions at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to the committee. Uh, any questions or comments or further clarifications after having heard um, the public delegations?
Adam? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess a lot of the delegates just said they didn't have any questions. So I'm wondering if they have any comments, how they feel about, I guess, any of the proposed applications for the committee tonight. I'll let them, uh, I'll go to Danielle first and then we'll open it back up to if they'd like to comment on the overall applications where Danielle go. Sorry, people jump around here. Danielle? All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to put this, I guess, back to, to staff, um, maybe to Heritage, Bianca, or to Walter. Um, not being supportive of the creation of lot number one, um, understanding based on your staff report, um, but the creation of lot number three and behind, um, is it, is that, would, would that be the only proposal or is that the only type of development that you would be open to or supportable of, of this development? Would other configurations be possible? Has other options been explored? Um, understanding that this has gone to Heritage Committee, has there been other options? I, I, Pardon, I do have planning background, but I'm not a heritage planner. So as much as I did understand the planning side of the heritage report, I didn't quite understand the heritage side of the heritage report. Um, so I just didn't understand maybe have all avenues been explored? Have there been other options that have been presented? Are there other development opportunities that haven't been explored or have been explored? Um, and possibly what were the outcomes of those discussions? I'm not ex exact, I'm not asking for, you know, in-depth minutes of meetings if possible, but maybe a synopsis if possible. Bianca, would you like to answer that? Sure, I can, uh, through you, the chair. So this was the only configuration that was proposed to um, staff, the only configuration that was proposed to the Heritage Committee. Um, from a heritage perspective, that setback to the resource is significant. Um, so, Planning or uh, heritage staff wouldn't be supportive of um, a structure being built in front of the resource uh, because that deep lot helps to illustrate the development of Main Street and um, having something built in front of um, the historic building uh, will blur the lines between the historic and the um, new development. So something in front of the resource wouldn't um, be supported. And then further to that, um, the rear yard, we would be supportive of that severance if those auxiliary buildings or outbuildings uh, were to be preserved. Um, as they are character defining elements as well. And then further to that, this uh, property was assessed for its merit for designation. It met at least five for town staff's assessment. And then uh, about that, um, it might have been uh, four or five, I believe, for the heritage impact assessment that was uh, done by a third party heritage professional. I hope that answers your question. It does. Thank you. And then I guess just back to staff then on the, the designation aspect of it, where does that lie with council? Has a report been prepared? Is that being brought forward at this point in time? Um, where's the status of that at this point? Uh, through you, the chair. So a designation report is being um, completed by staff. It's in a draft um, stage right now. It's about, I would say, 85% finished. Um, the site does merit the designation, as I mentioned. Um, and we are recommending tonight that a easement agreement, um, that the owner enter into an easement agreement with the town as a condition of approval for the rear yard severance and the uh, supported minor variances um, that they will need to uh, pursue designation in order for that easement to be lifted. And then um, the site would be designated um, and the severance would take place. And then it is also recommended that those outbuildings be a part of the designation because there'll be two parcels now. Um, the schedule will be, um, yeah, schedule A actually um, speaks to the legal description of the property. So we would want both properties legal description included. Um, so yeah. That's that's a process and how it will go forward. Um, and then the merit for designation will be presented to Heritage Committee. They'll make a recommendation to council. And sorry, I apologize, Thank Mr. You. Chair. One more question. And Thank you. Was, no, it's okay. And what is the heritage value again? Is it a heritage landscape or was it a... Uh, so it's part four designation that would be recommended and that's for individual 
um, designation. So it's the architectural design of the building. Uh, there's associative significance with uh, fruit farming families. Um, there's a connection to um, some of the manufacturing that was um, introduced through Sears um, with the uh, materials used to construct the building as well as the outbuildings. And then it's use as a farm building, uh, a farm um, historically contributes to the um, pros. So basically the prosperity of Grimsby is built on uh, fruit farming. So this, this um, farm contributes to that. And then of course the Main Street West uh, corridor is a council identified culture heritage landscape and this resource and its vegetation, its setback um, and all of these pieces contribute um, to that uh, council identified culture heritage landscape. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought that it was also part of that. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. So Bianca, I have a question for you. Does the owner have to agree to all this to, to, to register it? Um, so it is recommended, or through you, Chair, <laughs> to, yeah. um, it is recommended that uh, by uh, staff that that be a condition of approval that we enter into that easement agreement so they would only get that be able to do that severance if they entered into that agreed um, easement um, and then the designation process we don't need owner concurrence but we would want to have it uh, we always work towards having owner concurrence okay so it would be a condition of severing lot three but yeah. let's say they didn't get approval for lot three could you still go ahead and designate the entire property preventing them from ever trying to sever it again in the future or is this the idea is that, okay, we'll give you the severance or support your severance, but we want uh, uh, an easement or part four designation on lot the new lot three, and then what would be one and two combined, I guess, if that one wasn't approved. Absolutely. So it's kind of like, a, we'll offer you a bit of a carrot, we'll offer you support for the back lot severance, but give us a, or agree to a designation. So the merit through the chair, uh, the merit for designation stands with or without the severances. Um, if this application were to not be approved, then the um, subject of designation, that's be something I would approach the homeowners with uh, as a separate matter. And then um, we would work towards if that was something they were supportable of or not. Um, if the heritage committee wanted to move forward with that recommendation, or we felt that the resource was at risk, or if they uh, wanted to demolish the structure, those are all avenues that we would uh, bring this forward to Heritage Committee and then forward to Council, but they're really two separate um, processes. And then the um, property owner does have appeal rights to the designation. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Any other questions uh, from the committee first? Um, and then to, further to Danielle, or maybe it was Adam's comments, if there's anyone that we uh, addressed earlier who said no comment, did you like to add anything or make a comment at this point before we call for motions? So we'll do them individually. I guess we'll start with the, the lot one, lot three severance, and then the lot one severance, and then the variances. So anybody in the audience, I know it's hard. To, we don't have you on the screen, so you can't wave your hand, but maybe if you just unmute. Bob? We'll start with Bob because Bob yeah. appeared first. <laughs> so regarding the law three severance, um, I, I guess my concerns are primarily with what happens to that property after the severance is granted, if it's granted. I mean, what is to stop someone from buying that property, tearing down that existing structure on it, and then putting up something that, you know, I mean, it, it would obstruct my view. I mean, there's a nice field behind me now, but what happens if someone puts up a monster home or worse, like petitions the city to have some multi multi dwelling structure put onto it like who knows what could happen in the future those are primarily my concerns like once the plot is severed what happens and what's the worst that could happen okay thanks bob but i think bianca bianca alluded to that and so did uh, jared and walter the a condition of that severance so lot three severance would be that the owner enter into a heritage agreement preventing anything else but what's there being added to that property I mean, doesn't stop them from coming back and, uh, and applying again, but I think a heritage designation overlay is, is more restrictive than um, a minor variance or a severance application, but Bianca can speak to that. Bianca, she has her hand up. Yeah, uh, through you, the chair. I was just going to note if the property is designated 
um, through that easement agreement, then a heritage in, a heritage permit would be required um, to do an alteration to the site once the site is designated. And that's a process that goes through the Heritage Committee and Council. And then further to that, uh, Council would have to approve the demolition of those buildings. And um, that would involve a, a stringent assessment of the resources. Um, and then a heritage impact assessment would also need to be um, done with the scope being on that exact proposal. So does that help, Bob? It, yes, um, but just one point of clarification on that. So yep. if the lot is severed and then sold, I'm assuming for the purposes of being sold, does the person buying that property also have to enter into that agreement? Yeah, it's registered on title. Okay, got it. Yeah. It's okay, permanent, thank yeah. So I, I, I thank you for the opportunity. Those are just my concerns with, with what's going on. No problem. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Anybody yeah. else? Yeah. That spoke earlier. I, I heard a yep, but I don't see anybody yet. Just give me a second. Sorry. Oh, Kristen. Kristen has her hand up. I guess my concern um, about the severance at the back on lot three as well um, had to do with initially knowing that the property itself, the before the severance was heritage registered. And I guess my concern is, is that if we're going to move forward with a designation of the back, um, why we're not really considering a designation of the whole property because if that were the case, then the severance wouldn't even be able to go through in the first place. Walter, you had your hand up as well, so maybe you can respond, or Bianca. I just had uh, one comment regarding uh, um, regarding the previous uh, comments that were going around. Um, the uh, the agreement would run with the title because it would be registered, uh, but it would shortly follow and, and the agreement would be rescinded following the designation of the property and the designation of the property, uh, if it, um, um, it withstands an appeal, if there is an appeal, um, then that would protect the existing building. Uh, but that wouldn't prevent, like Bianca noted, that wouldn't prevent uh, potential additions or modifications to the site uh, subject to uh, permits that would be required to be approved heritage permits that would be required to be approved by the heritage committee and council. So I just want to put uh, that little bit of clarity into into the and nuance into that uh, particular discussion. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Walter. But that could happen now, regardless of the severance. They could also apply to put an addition that's, on that. That's correct. Uh, other than if there if there are no severances, um, then additional dwellings would not be permitted. Right, but an expansion to that existing. What additions would be permitted? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Bianca has her hand up still, I believe. Uh, thank you, through the chair. I just wanted to add one uh, comment. So the designation applies to real property, so it would apply to the entire parcel. So it would include the rear and the the uh, front building. I hope that answers the previous question. Um, I had another comment, but I I can't remember what it was. But that's that's all for now. Thank you. Uh, we had Kristen. I'm just going to look around here. Anybody else like to uh, add comments? Now you've heard some more feedback and reports. Uh, Nino? Hi there. Yes, thank you. Uh, just for the record, we're at 26 Hickory Crescent. A little bit of background from us. Uh, our family moved to Grimsby from Burlington in 2008 to 54 Hickory Crescent, which is on the other side of, uh, of, of the Crescent here. A couple of days after we saw the for sale sign come up on 26 Hickory, we basically purchased it immediately due to the wonderful home that was on the lot, but also primarily due to the backyard that uh, uh, was, was available. So. Our concerns are primarily around the lot one severance to this project. Um, really the, the fundamental issues that we have pertain to uh, just the privacy, the impacts, the mature landscape, which includes removal of extremely mature trees, which are hard to come by, um, especially in this day and age. And coming from Burlington, that was a, a, a big seller for us to come to Grimsby as well. And not to mention the escarpment views, um, the escarpment views that, that we can see uh, the, the second we get out onto our backyard, which we enjoy immensely with our family, 
would all be, I think, uh, impacted severely by a building being raised uh, instead of those trees there. So to Bob's point, being worried about uh, buildings and larger buildings being erected potentially in, in, in lot three, this is the reality of this proposal is they're proposing to erect a large building and garage and remove the landscape and, and the mature trees directly in, in basically in frontage view of my backyard. So. On top of that, I know other letters have been written in, uh, as correspondence to the town pertaining to impacts to overall property value, because uh, as mentioned, moving from 54 Hickory to our current home, 26 Hickory, we were under the impression, and I don't know if it's rightly so or not, that being a heritage property, is it designated or not? I think that's uh, a question we still have, but being, to being told by the agent, seller, and buyer that a heritage property being behind us would ensure that nothing would be built in the future or near future impacting the views or the privacy that we had in the backyard, um, that's that's a, a massive concern, I think, from our perspective, um, having a lot being severed, the impacts of Main Street, removal of mature landscape, and then having a house, uh, even the image that Mr. Marcus, uh, Jared Marcus showed, um, that house would be directly in in in, in view and li uh, uh, line sight from our backyard. So uh, those are some of our concerns. Uh, I think it's the lot one proposal that we're more opposed to due to those concerns. Um, and yeah, thanks for the opportunity for sharing that. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, do, 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 do. anybody else? No, and if not, then I'm going to have. Oh, oh wait, I hear. Yeah, somebody. it's just it's Bob. Oh, uh, Bob. Next, yeah, Haworth, the 38 uh, Hickory. I, I share the same views with uh, our neighbor next door, Bob. With you know existing structures, if it gets sold, I know we talked about it, but again, that was a bit of a, a selling point for a lot of people that uh, bought uh, land or property adjacent to that uh, heritage site. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kristen? Are we still just offering comments on lot three or? No, no, the whole, we're, we're dealing with all of them at once. So feel free to comment on one, three or all or none or both. Um, okay. So I just have a couple of additional things that I just wanted to mention, I guess, um, just looking at the overall subdivision plan, um, when the initial shots were shown of like the whole overview of the subdivision and how it has been built up and intensified, it's not like I'm against the intensification, but I think that, um, what they were trying to support there was like how the severance was going to be offering some form of continuity, but I don't think building flag lots is the solution to the continuity in the neighborhood, because if you're looking, everything is a crescent with its own set of driveways. And I don't think that that's going to offer the same character of what the neighborhood currently has. So I don't think it's really going to match that overall context, even though the frontage for the lots he was showing would be somewhat similar. Um, in terms of like the visual context of the house, like due to the vegetation that he was saying was like impeding that view, um, I was always under the understanding that the official town plan um, with that special paragraphing referring to Main Street was to preserve not just the dwellings, but the actual vegetation itself. Um, and then just in terms of like the overall physicality and the natural dimensions of the current lot in question, um, based off the fact that every single lot severance um, doesn't meet at least two conditions of either frontage percentage coverage or rear lot, rear lot setback. I don't think that the physical characteristics of the lot allow it to be severed in an effective manner. And then just um, in terms of something that was brought up about the three mailboxes um, that exist at the current dwelling, um, just having those three mailboxes there and then adding additional dwelling onto that overall space, I think is really going to increase the amount of driveway traffic that you have trying to exit onto Main Street, which is a fairly busy road with, I know we've decreased the speed limit, but um, people are still driving very fast down that road. Thank you for your comments, Kristen. Anyone else? If not, do we have any further comments? Uh, oh, Adam, thank you from the committee. I was just gonna say. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to Bianca, um, just wondering if if the lot was retained as, uh, sorry, as the parcel was retained as one whole, would that serve heritage greater than say, cutting up and severing it? Um, through you, the chair, uh, if I'm understanding your question correctly, would the designation stop a severance? No, sorry. Oh. I'm just sort of saying from a heritage aspect, would it be better if uh, the parcel was retained as a whole? I think the, impacts to the resource from the proposal should be mitigated um, if those auxiliary buildings or outbuildings are going to be retained through the designation then the visual relationship between those outbuildings and the main building wouldn't change it would be essentially an imaginary line between those buildings um, but if those buildings were to be removed from the site then um, that kind of visual relationship between the outbuildings and the house would change and that kind of um, continuity of those two sites provides further context onto that historic use. So it has a farm. So you see those outbuildings and you think, okay, this was a farm, uh, this was farmland. So our concern was that those um, outbuildings would become vulnerable to redevelopment if the severance took place without having long-term protection under the Ontario Heritage Act through designation. So um, it, the proposed severance at the back would be okay because that relationship wouldn't change from a heritage perspective. If the proposal changed, it may. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, Danielle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, that's ex actually exactly what I, the along the lines of I was thinking, um, Adam as well too, is um, functionality, the two dwellings exist. So severing them and whether they're on one lot or two lots makes realistically no difference because it's an invisible line. There's going to be two families potentially living there. Um, they use the exact same driveway and how it looks on site is going to be maintained. It's just they're going to be on separate parcels of property. So um, I'm I'm agreeing. My my position at this point in time is is in agreement with staff's recommendation at this point in time, and in supporting the creation of lots, um, I guess of lot three, uh, and not of the creation of lot one, um, which would as a result create lot number two. So um, basically, maintaining the existing heritage resources, not proposing a new lot at the front, um, but but um, supporting the creation of the third lot in at the rear um that's just where i stand at this point in time based on the evidence and the um information that's been presented by the residents at this point in time mr chair thank you when i and i believe you're agreeing with it because of the conditions proposed to be attached to that that is absolutely correct yes only with the uh condition do oh. I feel confident in that recommendation, Mr. Chair? Thank okay. you. And by creating lot three, staff maybe can help me or Walter, that will require the variances on lot two, regardless of lot one is created. In other words, that shed is going to be in the way of the driveway. Am I, am I correct in that? That shed would have to be moved and then variances uh, approved for moving that shed to the proposed location. So there is in a sense, some impact on lot two by creating lot three, right? The, sh the shed that's there on the right, when you drive down the driveway, it's on the right-hand side. Yes, if the existing shed is to remain in its current location and not moved, then um, uh, by virtue of creating the new lot, uh, there may be variances required for that existing location. Um, Again, uh, or we do not support moving the shed to uh, part five or on the lot of the existing building, um, with the exception if uh, the shed could potentially be moved beside or behind the existing building um, in, a, in a location that's conforming with the zoning bylaw, but we would not support moving the shed to a location in front of the building. So the shed could be, if the, if the intent is to move the shed, the shed could be moved to a conforming location on the combined With, lot one and lot two. Without a variance. 
Thank you for that as clarification. As in front of the building. Right. That's the only variance required because of where they're proposing to put it. Sorry, you, you went on mute too soon. That's correct. <laughs> I had a follow-up question. All right. Any other questions from the committee? I think we've heard uh, a comprehensive uh, report and staff report and comments and feedback from the neighbors. So I'd like to suggest that we move to a, a motion on the first application. I, I would agree with Danielle. I'm in favor of lot three being created. I don't think it has any impact and that's supported by staff as well. Um, I'm kind of 50-50 on lot one, to be honest, just because you can't see the resource already, but um, I'll concur with staff's recommendation and heritage at this point, but I, I could be swayed, I think, but uh, for sure I'm in favor of lot three. Um, so I'll ask the committee's uh, pleasure here for a mover and a seconder on the first one, which would be uh, B0322. Oh, sorry, no, that's uh, part one. So maybe we can start with part one, that is the front lot. So we'll call for that one in order. Somebody wish to make a motion to approve or deny or defer with reasons, conditions? Danielle, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am moving that application B0322 for 292 Main Street West to sever off part one and be subject to easements uh, four, five, and seven. Um, pardon me, I'm just reading the resolution. I apologize, just making sure I'm getting it correctly. Um, an easement in favor of part one for access and parts three, seven, and 10 easement in favor of part one for servicing. Um, sorry, pause in the middle of that. Two staff, do we wanna keep the part 15 for road widening? And then will that have to get moved to the second consent application to satisfy the region requirements? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Just wanna double check. Um, an easement in favor of uh, part one for servicing and part 15 regional road allowance widening uh, be refused um, of the opinion that it does not meet um, the official plan regulations that are set out in the staff report and it does not satisfy the um, heritage requirements set out in the heritage impact assessment um, recommendations um, for maintaining the heritage resource visibility along Main Street. Thank you, Danielle. And uh, seconder on that motion to refuse. Herb, any further discussion? So uh, just to be clear, we're gonna lift or re-lift, I guess, part 15, the regional road allowance on the other one. We can do that even though they're not physically attached. I guess they are part of the same parent property then, right, Walter? So we can move that road allowance uh, road widening to the second one if that one's approved. Yes, uh, it's not part of the application. So uh, you wouldn't be making a decision or you can't just change the application. That's not, uh, so what you'll need to do is you'll need to add that as a condition of approval if, if right. uh, is it appropriate to approve the creation of lot three? Right. The dedication of the road allowance widening should be a condition of approval, not change the application. Gotcha, okay. Thank you for that clarification. So uh, mover and a seconder, any further discussion? All those in favor to refuse, say aye or raise their hand. Opposed, if any, was carried. And then we will move to the second one, which is B0422. Danielle, I'll just I'm looking to continue you. on. Yeah. Um, so I will move that uh, re be resolved that application B0422 regarding 292 Main Street West for consent to sever of land shown on part uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 on the circulated sketch for residential uses subject to easements part 14. I'm just going back to the sketch just to make sure that we're still having the correct parts here, not creating a issue. Um, anybody else feel free to jump in so I don't look like a full scrolling at 1020 at night through a 600 page report. 
There we go. Okay. Um, okay, that still looks correct. Um, subject to easements for part 14, easement in favor of parts two to nine for access. Part 12, easement in favor of parts two to nine for servicing and parts six, seven, and eight easements in favor of parts 10 to 14 for access. Um, Walter, that still applies with everything, notwithstanding the creation of lot number one not being approved. Yes, uh, with uh, one small proviso that uh, um, I, I believe that the, the easements uh, required for servicing were not supported by public work staff. Uh, their opinion was that each lot should be serviced on, on itself or from itself and not have to cross over lot lines. So easements should not be required for services. But they already do, Walter. There's already servicing running through like that. I believe that part 12 reflects the existing location of the services that go through plan 58 and 59 out to the east. Like that's just record. Part, part 12 recognizes the location of existing services. Am I correct? Yeah, would, it, would, it be, would it be appropriate for me to share the screen and then... Uh, I yeah. Spencer Pierce uh, from the Public Works Department. Comment. Sure. Okay. I was just going to ask this, Spencer, yep. to chime in. Thank you. Uh, sharing, sharing. I just don't want to get caught into a similar situation that we had with uh, the Leona Station sign and where they had to come back yes. and amend their application to get the correct parts again. So. Okay. Can you can you see the plan here? No. You can't. Oh, I didn't press share. There, there we, go. we go. Now we can see. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, part 12, uh, there is an existing sanitary lateral that does come through there. But for our vision, we would see that uh, if part three is created or lot three is created, sorry, lot three, uh, that they would be able to utilize that lateral for themselves and not require the easement. And then the existing main use uh, dwelling uh, part or lot two would require a new service that's not shared with uh, lot three and that would go out to Main Street. Okay, so then we would have lot in favor of part five. So we don't need to have, okay. I understand. So part five then would need to be serviced directly off of Main Street, no longer serviced by part 12. Is that correct, Spencer? That is correct. Okay. So, Thank so you. Spencer, I have a question. Is a standing back there, is there enough slope to bring the sewers forward to or south to Main Street? Uh, is so there is, yes, sorry, three minutes, Chair. There are, they have provided a preliminary plan with this uh, submission here uh, with it being pumped to the property line on Main Street and then being gravity fed down to the um, main street sewer. Pumped? Yes, it would be through a force main, like a force main on private property. And then when it went to public property, it would tie in through a manhole and then gravity to our infrastructure. So wouldn't it be easier or I don't know, less maintenance in the future just to do a gravity over the existing part 12, recognizing what's there? I mean, it's not ideal but it's kind of reflecting i mean to put a pumping station or a pumping force main for one dwelling i don't know that just sounds like trouble in the future to me uh, it, what do it i is, know yeah, no no three uh it is uh other places in town do have uh this setup where it is uh pumped or through a force main we don't allow for shared lateral so this sewer lateral currently isn't sized appropriately to have two full dwellings going through that part 12 and then uh, through the other easement there. So it's not sized appropriate. So to go in and have to reconstruct that uh, would be obviously quite extensive and intrusive to those existing residents. Uh, so, so, so right well, now, part 13, as shown, goes on its own directly through 59 and 58. We, it is not clear where that is tied into. Oh. So it, is, it, is, it is assumed that it probably goes through 13, currently sharing a lateral, which is prohibited. And depending on 
if this severance was to go through, you might end up having additional people living there. And yeah, it wouldn't be sized. It's only a right. four inch lateral. But I mean, this was created in 2000. So I don't think, I mean, they would have anticipated at that time. I, I would think they registered that easement for that purpose back in 2000. That wasn't that long ago when they created this. But anyways, that's just for, some questions or comments. For a single, for a single dwelling though. Uh, okay. Okay. Herb? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm still concerned about that easement uh, going, uh, force main going out from the house and that, uh, is it not, is that easement not wide enough to have two laterals in it? It would be easier and probably less expensive to put an additional lateral in that easement or increase the size of the lateral in that easement uh, with backflow preventers on, on both of them. Uh, than it would be to put in a fourth main out to, out to Main Street. Um, has that been looked at, uh, increasing the size? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, no, it hasn't been looked at now. It would obviously require uh, like a servicing brief from the applicant on that. Also, with our thought is we are taking in consideration of if there was a second lateral, it's not sized appropriately. Uh, that's for sure, because it's only a three meter wide easement right now. And to construct anything new, you're going through two existing properties uh, that are in place. So if it was a, a second lateral, there would be required a second easement for that additional dwelling or the separate dwelling that would be getting created also through lots 58 and 59. But would would the through your Mr. Chair, you say that's a three meter uh, easement, and uh, would that three meters not be wide enough for two laterals? It it would be very difficult to fit both in there and have space to dig down and properly construct a second lateral beside that one. Uh, it, yeah, we we wouldn't we wouldn't support that. So, well, I'm going to ask the applicant or Jared, there is some talk about directional boring, et cetera, et cetera. So the alternative, I guess, is to do what staff, uh, engineering staff recommend is that go south to Main Street. Was that the original intent or they were agreeable to that originally? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the proposal as you see it today is the existing lateral from 292 the main dwelling goes out to catalpa i don't know how to pronounce that catalpa goes out to catalpa so and two, yep. a new lateral was proposed to go down the driveway for the dwelling at the rear so if the suggestion is detach the lateral of the existing sanitary from the main dwelling and hook up the lot three to that and continue out to catalpa and then have a have that directional drilling occur for the existing main dwelling at 292. I mean, it's, on the surface, okay. it sounds like six of one, half dozen of the other, right? Okay. You're, you're so going then, out to Maine in one. The proposal is one service to Maine currently, one service to Catalpa. So the suggestion seems to be just which house is going in which direction. Gotcha. So then to Danielle's original question, we wouldn't require part 12. Correct. That's what I'm just figuring out now. So, okay. Right. So either way, the requirement is, is each lot needs to be individually serviced and not cross over an adjacent property, private properties lot. Correct, Spencer? I see your head nodding. Okay, fantastic. So back to my motion then, because I think I have it figured out now. Um Resolved that application B0422 regarding 292 Main Street West for consent to sever parts 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 to create the lot subject to easements, uh, part 14 easement in favor, favor of parts two to nine for access, delete part 12 dash easement in favor of parts two to nine for servicing, keep in and parts six, seven, eight, and nine easement in favor of parts 10 to 14 for access, because that will get you the access to the back for parts 11, 
12, 13, and 14 to create the lot because once 12, because 12 will stay on that for the lot at the back. Um, now. And the road widening of part 15 is already under condition 10. One second. Correct. Thank you. I hadn't gone through all the conditions yet, but I see Herb has his hand up again. Okay, so that's the motion. And Herb? And it's sorry that it be approved with oh, conditions. Oh, sorry. Sorry that it be approved with conditions um, as noted in the resolution. All the conditions look like they are there based on the staff comments. Okay, thank you. And Herb, are you seconding the motion or do you have a question? Uh, just a, a comment. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, until such time as uh, a lateral can be put out from the main building to Main Street, would that uh, easement not have to be in place to allow uh, the servicing of that house until the uh, force main is installed? Walter. Yeah, that's, uh, again, <clears throat> the um, uh, the design of the servicing for the site on the respective lots, not crossing lot lines, uh, would have to be approved by staff. Um, a condition is that they enter into a development agreement with the town, uh, which would secure the installation of the services uh, subject to a, a letter of credit. And... Um, and Herb, we're not asking for that easement to be lifted or removed through this process. The easement will stay in place and then it has to be yes. legally removed at that so, point. There's no, existing, there's no existing easement. No, there's no existing there's And no existing so that's covered. It's covered, in, right. it's covered in condition eight as well. All right. lots are to be individually serviced and contained within there the respective yes. property. So it that's is right. covered off. That's right. So the, the, the services would then actually have to be installed on the respective lots to being able to uh, register the lots at separate lots and complete the severance. So that's what I'm getting at. The, se the severance can't go through until the main house is connected to Main Street. Correct. That's correct, which is addressed by the uh, uh, conditions of approval that have been uh, identified. Uh, do we have a seconder then on the motion that Danielle's motion? Sorry, can you stop share screen share? I can see uh, need to see more people here. There sure. we go. Sorry, uh, seconder then. That's for approved with conditions, Herb. Any further comments or question from the committee? I see your hand, Bob, but we're going to ask for the motion first or have a vote on it. Adam? Yeah, I'm just wondering if um, we need to read out the conditions to the uh, applicant and agent just so they're certain what we're voting on. Uh, Jared, would you prefer that? I mean, they were circulated and they were attached to the motions, but I don't know if you want us to read them specifically. Jared? Where is he? He's on mute. Yeah, there you go. It's been so long, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> um, I can certainly I, read them. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be beneficial for... Okay, yeah. I will. All right, so the motion was to approve with conditions. So the conditions are the first, the standard one, the applicant provides Secretary of Treasury with deeds and triplicates for conveyance of the subject parcel. Um, the final certification fee be payable to the town of Grimsby, that all conditions of consent be fulfilled within two years of the date of this decision. Um, subse subsection three or five of section 50 of the Planning Act 1990 shall apply to any subsequent conveyance or transaction. The proponent is, to require, <clears throat> is required to submit an overall grading plan for lots one, two, and three to the town. The drainage for each lot is to be self-contained and discharged to an adequate outlet to the satisfaction of the Director of Public Works. The grading plan is to be completed by an Ontario land surveyor engineer. 
And six, the proponent is required to submit an overall storm, stormwater management report to the town deemed satisfactory at Director of Public Works. Seven, the proponent is required to submit a servicing plan accurately showing the existing proposed servicing, water and sanitary to the town deemed satisfactory to the Director of Public Works. And eight, all lots to be individually serviced and contained within their respective property. Nine, the owner shall enter a development agreement with the town of Grimsby and the agreement shall be registered and titled. Ten, the owner shall dedicate part 15 as a road widening as confirmed by an OLS to the regional municipality of Niagara along the frontage of Main Street West prior to issuance of a building permit. 11, the applicant submit a stage one, two, one to two archeological assessment prepared by Earthworks Archeological Services, Inc. dated March 15th, 2022. So I assume that's already been done to the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries and receive an acknowledgement letter from them to confirm that all archeological resource concerns have met licensing and resource conservation requirements prior to any development of the site. And 12, the owner provide written undertaking to the region that the following clause be inserted into any offers of purchase and sale or lease for parts one and 10 to 15 that reads as follows. The owners, purchasers, tenants are advised that they will need to bring their waste and recycling containers to the curbside on their designated collection day to receive regional waste collection. And 13, the property owner would be required to provide easements on the west side of the lands in favor of the Grimsby Power Incorporated in order to obtain individually ut utility owned electrical services for each proposed dwelling. The entire cost of the servicing of the land should be borne by the developer. And 14, that the owner executed a heritage easement agreement with the town pursuant to the Ontario Heritage Act to protect these heritage attributes identified as the Edwardian structure, landscape and auxiliary buildings as more particularly described in the staff memorandum titled Land Division Application 292 Main Street West dated September 20th, 2022, and register such easement against title to the property. So there you have it. Those are the conditions as proposed for the creation of this lot. Um, any further questions from the committee members? <clears throat> if not, then do I have a, uh, sorry, all those in favor of the motion say aye or raise their hand. Opposed, if any, the motion was carried. Three to two. And we have one more to deal with, and that's the variances. <clears throat> All right, Maybe. Um, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, we have yep. the first uh, part one severance as well to deal with. Can the I part one minor variances? Oh, the yes. part one minor variances. Sorry, oh, Michaela, no. I, I don't know if you noticed. Um, I, we all received an email from a Karen saying that she's been trying to dial in, but has not been successfully able to. I don't know if she's still in the waiting room or if you got a hold of her. Um, I just wanted to, I don't know if she's still there. It was sent at like 9, 9.30. So I apologize, yeah. I just noticed it now. Yeah, she, I talked to her in the past. Um, they may or may not have been able to attend because of location, but they had a letter that was sent in. So their okay. um, concerns have been voiced. Okay, uh, perfect. Thank you. Because she had sent it to the entirety of the list. So I just wanted to make sure. Okay, sorry, I skipped one here. Herb, you're right. So the next one is the uh, application B0422 regarding 292 Main Street West for consent to sever the uh, I guess it would effectively be lot one, right? The front lot. Part Is one. that right? Part one. Part one. Yeah, I call it lot one of the other, but you're right. Part one. So this it's, is the front lot. Sure, sure, sure. Is it just me or did we not do the front lot? Or we already did the front lot. We well, did I, it. I, I don't know why I've got this one still sitting here then. We, we need to do the variances for yes. yeah, the, the two severances have been determined. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know why? There's a duplicate that, here. That's, that's why. The first minor variance application that should be up. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's late. There was a duplicate yeah. printed out in front of me. So yeah, we, we I'm seeing things. Have, we didn't want to have to rehash it again. No, please no. Okay. So the next one is the minor variance for it's 826.22 but there's a lot of them woven in there. So um, 
I'm looking to the committee for a motion and you're going to have to be clear. Maybe Walter can help us if we need it. So because proposed plot one isn't there. Yes, through the chair. So, so from what I understand, um, just because I had made the motions before I was writing down some notes. So, so therefore based on the notice of circulation, the variances for lot number one are um, no longer required because staff did, because we did not support or approve the um, consent Severance. to create that lot. Correct. For, for lot number two, I believe it changed as a result, it's going to change the lot frontage for lot number two. And I do not believe that that lot frontage variance would be required anymore because uh, lot number one's lot frontage was already 18 meters. So for adding on another four meters, it would be approximately 22, give or take, for lot number two. So I don't think we need that variance for lot number two anymore. Um, so the rear yard setback would still be required and the accessory building to be located closer to the street than the front wall of a dwelling um, would still be proposed. So those two variances at this time are still proposed, not talking about whether or not they're supported at this point in time. And then lot number three, I think all of those are still proposed and required at this point in time. Nothing's been changed for that application. Um, am I correct, Walter, with Cor those based on yeah, that's that's correct, and and okay. uh, our our position is that the the front yard accessory structure on on lot three um, only be supported for the existing building, and that's yes, and and would not be supported. That variance is not supported for lot number two because there is not one there, and we want to again maintain that heritage resource and the views to it. Is that correct, that's to Walter correct. and Bianca? Similar as to why we did not support the consent for okay. Um, okay, so then to be inconsistent with our previous decisions for the creation of lots, um, I would then, because we should do not a removal, but in a, a denial and approval for the variances, um, my motion then would be to deny the variances for lot number one, so both of those variances, um, to support or approve um, under the subheading of lot number two variances number one and two, um, but to not support or approve variance number three and to support all uh, four variances under the subheading of lot number three. Um, and that is based on direction from the staff report. Um, my, my recommendation or my motion is based on the fact that I feel that these variances specifically are minor in nature as it, as it relates to this proposed development in these lots and this lot configuration specifically um, based on the um, information and the justification that's been brought forward in the staff report and brought forward to the residents as well um, tonight. Um, also, thank you very much to the residents and your patients and sticking it out with us for an hour and a half. Um, and um, I'll, I'll just continue my motion. It does meet the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and the official plan. And I do feel that these are appropriate for the development and use, um, but I'll leave it back now to the chair to open it up for further comments on these. Thanks, Danielle. And I see Walter has a hand up. Maybe it's a technical thing about splitting the, splitting or even requiring the variances if the lot one wasn't created. Um, yeah, yes. The only question I have uh, to, uh, uh, member Beck's uh, resolution is, uh, again, for clarity, uh, I didn't hear it, whether or not uh, you intend to add a condition uh, that the front yard accessory building variance for part three or for lot three would apply only to the existing building. So that's a condition that's proposed. It's written down, Danielle. So I'm assuming you're agreeing with the conditions that they've attached at number one and two. You're on mute, but you're nodding. I'm it's late. Sorry. It's been a long hey, day. Yes, I read I the apologize. same motion. I read the same motion on one we just dealt with. So, subject to the two conditions, because there are two um, within the resolution that was circulated. Yes, I apologize. Thank, thank you, you Walter. I did not scroll down enough in my yeah. my. Sheet. Yeah. Thank you. 
Herb, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't want to prolong this or anything like that, but uh, we have two consents that we're looking at under this property. And so far from, I think we've only addressed one consent. No, we proved, we denied one and approved the other. Okay. And then the variance is a separate item, which isn't covered under the consents. That's why we're dealing with them now. So because yes. we didn't approve the first one, we don't have to deal with, or we can deny the first set of variances that apply to the one we didn't approve, lot one, the front lot. Exactly. Yes. Right. But the second set of variances would be necessary to implement the severance for lot three. Would that, would that not require another application? No, because they're all on here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So a seconder. Sorry. And just for clarity's sake, the reason why my motion is to deny and approve is if the applicant does so choose to appeal the decision rather than removing the variances, we're making a decision on the variances and they have a decision to appeal. So that's the reason why I'm, my motion is clear for approving and denying variances and not the recommendation to remove variances. Thank you for that clarification. So do we have a seconder on that? So it's a it's a split motion, I guess, if you will, to approve uh, the lot, effectively approve the lot three variances to implement that severance and to deny the variances related to lot one, which is not being created, but it's also reinforcing the denial of that. Clear as mud at 1046. Seconder on that motion, anybody? All right, I'll put my hand up to second that motion then if nobody else will. Any further discussion on this motion as uh, submitted? All those in favor as proposed as what was outlined and read with conditions? All those in favor say aye or raise their hand. Opposed, if any, it was carried. Thank you everyone for attending. There is a 20 day appeal period before it becomes final and binding, but uh, thank you very much for your patience and uh, have a good evening. I believe that's all we have. So I would say that the meeting is adjourned. Not bad, we didn't have to extend past 11. Thanks everybody. Pass the resolution, right? Thank you. Thanks, folks. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Good you. night. Good night. Record.